because it is going to be six intact that uh, be coming out on top. Really great stuff from both of them. Valiant effort as well from Skillmaster and JW. Um, but that is going to be the two of them going on. As I think we're going to be hopping servers right now, y'all. And before we leave, it seems that Ed and Donovan are playing their second match on Badlands. It was twenty to fifteen apparently for the tax Ooh, match. So okay, yeah, okay. pretty pretty dang close. Um, yeah, Donovan and Ed actually down three to two versus China Cock McNubovich and Ilya on Badlands Middle. Okay. And so, gotcha. yeah, and up now, down now, four to two. This is pretty interesting. This would be a huge upset. This is almost like, uh, like a uh, March Madness, but for TF two. You know what I mean? <laughs> the potential for I should have done there. that. You know, predict predict what it's gonna be. You know, and maybe you get a key. You know, that that could have been. Ah, uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. That, that could be an interesting take on it. But uh, yeah, no. So far, it's it's their match to lose. They managed to claw one back, three to five now. And it is a demo scout versus demo scout, so pretty much parody. And now it's just China Cock left alive in this round. <laughs> Actually, Donovan kills himself, but that doesn't matter. It's MGE, so. Oh, Denis! I thought that. I'm like, that looks like a name I've seen before. Okay, that makes sense. Denisovich and Ilya. Yeah, uh, is it interesting that yeah. Donovan's on demo, you know, not on Soldier, which is his main? Maybe he feels that because Denisovich is on demo that he had to respond in kind and just Makes have sense. like all those projectiles to just spam across and get that spam damage to help his scout partner ed out but at the moment it seems like they've been able to even things up a little bit gonna be uh five to six now kind of flying back Woo! and you know that's that's always the thing you're never you're never quite out until you're out when it comes to mge it could be 19-0 and if you if you start hitting your shots you know making the correct plays you can get back in it all the same and uh Ooh. at the moment oh my god that tempo Watch. just got launched <laughs> 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 they actually got transported all the way across the map from those bullets. Yeah, there's nothing more fun than surfing hit scan. Absolutely love it. It's invigorating, especially when you're trying to surf off of a heavy's mini gun. <laughs> it's basically like playing <laughs> Russian roulette. Oh. Wait, no pun intended. I just realized that's a pun. I'm sorry. I didn't mean that. I take it back. It's no, nothing no, like no, Russian no. roulette. But yeah, so they've taken the lead back up by two now, eight to six. Showing that they are a force to be reckoned with. No matter the class, is a little bit of a demo, demo duel and a scout duel yeah, right. happening off one by one. And uh, yeah, up now three points, nine to six. And this could be a sign of things to come. Ilya going down on the low ground to the scout of Ed. But ooh, that pills from Donovan. Going to secure the 10th round or point for his side. And uh, yeah, it's just looking like a brawl. And like brawl just sort of ending up on the low ground again scout v scout demo v demo it's almost like uh oh no that's just lame and nerdy i'm not gonna say that no it's fine it's i was fine. gonna go before, we're, i was gonna go nerds. <laughs> no no but this is like military strategy nerd type stuff it's, okay <laughs> yeah it's like he's giving supporting fire to his troops on the front line blah 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 you yeah, know whatever holy holy no 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 that makes sense that makes sense you know blitzkrieg oh one thing I am going to be interested to see is if, especially, you know, kind of like right now is a, uh, or maybe at the, maybe in the later bit is whether, you know, we're, we're going to start to see maybe some uh, higher coordination from some of these because they, uh, you know, even though MGE is mostly just like out DM, you know, it's kind of like the pinnacle of just like shoot better, win good right. type thing. When Once you start adding more players, you know, 2v2, you can start to add a little bit of strategy and... Uh, it can definitely be a factor if you get disconnected from your other uh, MGE partner and then you just whittle them down, then whittle down the other one. And so playing together, you know, strategy even important now, even though it's still mostly DM. And uh, speaking of it, like you said, Ed and Donovan being able to pull things back, uh -huh. uh, having a now a nice five point lead that uh, they've like been six. able to, yeah, convert it to six. So. Um, seems like maybe they just had some early, a uh, early kind of uh, hardships. Maybe with Donovan on demo, maybe he didn't warm up on that. You know, he was practicing his soldier as perhaps you'd expect. But at this point, it seems like they are flying through Dennis Vich and Ilya. 
Well, what I'm wondering is if it's actually going to settle into this sort of meta with this demo scout combination because I mean it's pretty powerful, especially on Badlands, you know, because uh, I, I played a lot of um, you know late night TV2 MGE with some of the guys from the refugee server, you know, and we always ended up just basically devolving into a scout scout and demo versus scout v demo each and every time, and yeah, it was pretty powerful, especially if you can uh, predict those spawns and just set a nice little sticky trap, get an easy kill, which I don't think is against any sort of rule I've seen, so it's fair game. It's basically no holds barred, except for the class restrictions. Yeah, I think I think you're right. I think it will make a lot of sense, because you get that projectile firepower from a demo, and also a big thing is that both of those classes don't need to hurt themselves to really do anything. If you're a soldier, you know, you right. gotta, you know, hurt yourself by rocket jumping and I, you know, it's not too big a deal in an actual sixes match because you got health packs and a medic to to hit you with an arrow. You know, if you when you do hurt yourself, but here every health is vital. So I think just by uh, even and also wasting ammo mm -hmm. by rocket jumping yourself is just going to make soldier. I think a very very um, underpicked class. You're going to be seeing a lot of scout and demo. I think is actually a very good way of looking at it, unless we see. A double Ooh. soldier on bad spire, which I would love to see personally. And just like that, Scratch and Yum Yum actually just took down six and tax twenty to five in their match. So I think it's going to be them gone from this one. Yeah. Unfortunate, yeah. but I mean, yeah, like I said, there's a lot of killers in this bracket, dude. It's like a fighting game tournament. You know what I'm saying? Where you're at Evo, there's like you know, the first <laughs> 128, and you're like, all right, cool. You know, I got a couple sets in. I'm I'm going to the next round. You know, best of 64, and then you run into a killer, and you're just like, oh god, why did I even sign up? You know what I mean? No, oh, yeah. It's, it's after I think the first match we saw, I saw someone type in chat, was that it? <laughs> 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 Which is a bit unfortunate, you know, and. I'd obviously, with this, uh, with these first two matches that we're seeing right here being best of ones, you know, you don't have a uh, a lot to do if you lose your first one. But you know, it's always great to just kind of take part in these events, as we are going to see Ed and Donovan come out on top. Uh, it was, I think, twenty to eleven. Yeah, eleven at the end of it. So uh, a bit close a year. Yeah, twenty eleven <laughs> was a good year before the world ended. <laughs> you know. That was 2012, my man. That was 2012. No, yeah, before the world ended. I remember that day because actually my buddy like came to my door to invite me over to an end of the world party he was having. He was like, yeah, put on really? a dress shirt. Really? Yeah, he was like, put on a dress shirt and tie. We're just going to have a, a party in my basement with a few people. And I'm like, all right, sure, cool. <laughs> Holy. Okay. So and actually, I, are... I, I forsake uh, scrims to go to that party, by the way. <laughs> oh, really? <laughs> yeah, it was my first season. I'm going to this party, man. I mean, fair. I mean, you know, if if it was actually the end of the world, where would you ever be? In scrims or you know, at, at your your best friend's party? Yeah, I no, think yeah, that, that's uh, pretty fair. A pretty fair, uh, yeah. Mm -hmm. I didn't factor that in, but yeah, no, that's a fair point. <laughs> I was what <laughs> 17, 18? Yeah, good lord. <laughs> and actually, I speaking of which, that day in school, I uh. Just to, just to mess with people, I put on like a surgical mask before it was cool, and I just had it on all day, and they're like, why do you have that? I'm like, just in case something happens, I don't know, man. Could be a virus <laughs> breakout, you know? <laughs> and actually, okay, bro. I'm just surprised the teacher didn't say, hey, take that off. Like, nobody nobody bothered me except the students were like, why are you wearing that? <laughs> <laughs> Woo! So they, the, 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 oh my goodness, we are you saw in that, a yeah? battle. Yeah, I did see that. Are you looking at David Raidface and yes. uh, Saxon Gungan? Yeah. yeah. Yeah, man, Saxon's been hitting uh, those rockets all day, and here we go. We see a little bit of a, a switch up to the formula we just saw, Scout and Soldier, this time. So I guess, I mean, if you're hitting fat directs like Sax has been hitting, you don't really need all that much extra health, do you? Because, I mean, he ended in two rockets. <laughs> That's 100% true. If you just hit every shot, man, you're just, like, the best, and you can just probably play Sniper. Honestly. <laughs> I mean, I actually, no, if you, you did hit every sniper. shot, you can play Sniper. I mean, probably the meta be... against that is just like have two scouts you now and just run it down at them. No? No, no, the meta would be shake your mouse and throw it at your dog and run at them. Because <laughs> then you can't Spin hit it. Around. Head... Yeah, because then your head hitbox is all over the place. It's, it's impossible to beat. I've tested this. I've tested this in scrims, dude. It's actually impossible. That is 100%. No, it actually, it actually is true. And you hold the W key because they don't expect it. Mm -hmm, you know? Mm -hmm. It is, it is, as it is new tech. Maybe well, not you, super new, but it is tech. You want to talk about unexpected, though. I don't think David Redface was expecting to be down six points as early against Saxon Gungan. I'll tell you that much, man. I think he thought his chances were better. Well, I mean, well, Saxon Gungan. As I say that, 
<laughs> sax and gungan you know i mean saxophone if you guys haven't heard is on freya tech um i don't know what team he was on before them but i know he's had a few seasons of invite experience definitely though i believe uh one of his first uh times on a top level invite team this upcoming season so it's gonna be interesting to see how he adapts to uh kind of the expectations of a top invite and you know having someone like banny there to kind of help you guide uh help guide you through the season and kind of elevate you to that froyo tech uh name but it, it is kind of funny number one like it, it feels like if you're on froyo tech you immediately just become the goat you know what i mean it, it doesn't matter what happened you just like you go through a training montage and you emerge just like a, a fucking beast. You know? Yeah, well, it's funny because, you know, Invite is basically the, the big leagues, right? But it's like, it doesn't really count until Banny's like, hey, you want to be on my team? You know what I mean? So it might as well be the amateur league until you're on Freya Tech. I don't personally believe that, but that's what I imagine the perception is. It's definitely, I mean, it, there's there's definitely a, probably a gap between low and uh, high in Invite, but well, I for think. for sure, but I mean, like, they, there's there's lots of teams that are slept on, like the second and third place teams last season. I thought they had they had it in them to really give uh, Freya a run for their money. Speaking yeah. of uh, sketchy situations, Sax is just dancing. Around I know, the just <laughs> jumping around the hoodoo, just <laughs> trying, just trying to hopefully connect that shot. Run into it! Run into it! Run into it! Please, please, <laughs> just praying and begging that. You know, that scout takes that rocket. I mean, those are always kind of like the worst moments. Oh my god, that rocket, speaking of saxophone, he just hit a very nutty uh, downward direct onto a uh, the soldier there. I, I assume it was Brian. Well, I'm um, just saying, dude, why why doesn't he hit rockets like this when he was on my teams and pugs, dude? That's crazy. This used to be my curse, man. They never hit the shots I want them to when they're on my team. No, that's and then when you're when they're on the opposite team, somehow they just like double direct you out the sky, and you're like, why, why me? What did I do? What did I, I do to you? you? I picked you all the time. You can't do me like this. <laughs> that's just that's just how it is sometimes. Unfortunately, you know, they just they just pop off when they're not on your team. But, you know, still, you love to see you uh -oh. love to see the great shots. You got to respect it. Oh. Oh. Speaking of, that's another great shot coming out from Saxophone again. That's David Redface, my man. Oh, wait, you think they're on the red team because he's he's David Redface? Oh my God, it all makes so much sense. You're totally right. It all right. makes so much sense. Well, well, they're down by eight, but they're getting these points back. And they can just keep focusing down these players. Well, nope, just like that, they got counter focused. They're at the yeah, corner they, that they had him trapped and became a trap of their own, and just like that, 19 and 0 game point coming up right here could end. In disaster, 1v2, just David Redface and 16 HP in a dream. Will he be able to make it work? <laughs> he's, he's just running around through shit house with the big just... oh! And just like that, boom shakalaka, 20 to 10. Saxon Gung is going to take this next round off the hands of David Redface and Brian. Yeah, and so they are going to be advancing onwards as you probably would have expected for uh, them, Saxophone and, and Gungan. Um, Gungan as well, also on Froyo Tech, I believe, this season. Uh, I think he's playing Flank Scout with Ed as the Pocket Scout. So, uh, definitely, you know, they've got that team synergy going on, Saxophone and Gungan. And I, I don't, I assume Saxophone is actually on the flank. So, yeah, two flank players, they got that flank synergy at the moment, just kind of rolling in and dealing out the damage. But I guess we can try and. Uh, another, doodle to another. Yeah, but another another factor about being on the flank is you have to be good at managing your health and working with what you got, you know what I'm saying? And good at the M. So MGE is sort of like a natural sort of fit to that kind of play style, you know what I'm saying? No, yeah, it it, it definitely definitely is. I'm going to I think a new connect. Um Okay. Alright, so we might have a uh, a new different yeah, let me uh, refresh the brackets up. here. So we have Wumpus against Della in the semifinal. Oh, no, so Wumpus actually won. So they're in the grand finals, it seems, from, for their bracket. Uh, on the other end, we have Money and Bitches waiting for the win between either A-Team or Peru Tech Evo. And yeah, uh, Peru Warlords 
is waiting for the winner of 20B in Pudzians. Uh, 20B, 20B might Ooh. be a, a forfeiting, apparently, according to our that, producer. That would be very unfortunate. It would have been... I Because I assume that's the Ash team, question mark? Um, I assume is the 20B squad. If you are new to uh, TF2, competitive TF2, which a, um, doesn't seem like that long ago, but it was actually quite a bit ago. Uh, that 20B last uh, marked a, uh, their territory in invite. Is that 2016? Uh, Upset alert. Oh. Oh! <gasps> Donovan's out. Oh. That is a heck of an upset. Donovan and KJ Quad, uh, the uh, Froyo alum and the current Froyo Tech uh, player, going to be out of this MGE tourney. That's definitely an upset. That's probably one that yeah. you would have expected to go away, uh, really the distance, you know, at least semifinals, maybe even the finals, depending on who they're playing in the semis. Um, so that is a, uh, that's, that's, that's a big surprise there, number one. Oh, yeah. I mean, I was expecting pretty pretty much every invite player up until the till the end here. So yeah, they're out, man. I don't know what the hell that's gonna spot for the rest of them, man. We are switching servers. Wonder Alexandros versus somebody. Versus somebody. Question is, will that somebody? Go to get Some somebody is gonna get hurt. The question is, is it somebody <laughs> or is it a? Uh... Wonder and Alexandros, um, both of them having a uh, pretty good invite experience. Tony um, and High of Hell. All right. Well, we are in here with Tony uh, and uh, High of Hell versus Wonder and Alexandros. Very even, actually, and both of them going uh, Scout and Soldier. And so we uh, sh should hopefully see some pretty nice, nutty air shots coming out from these guys. Alexandros, I think he plays... Oh, he is he? Uh, is he? Yeah. Oh, they're both are, actually. Sorry, what were you going to say? Oh, I was going to say, I'm pretty sure Alexandros first got into invite on Demo Man, but I think now he's kind of swapped over to the Soldier class. I think I remember his first seasons. Oh, Math and Tony. Okay. Gotcha. Oh, okay. Yeah, it is a uh, word in from our producer. It is Mav and Tony, the Peruvians, coming in here, kind of staking, staking their claim right now and doing really good, honestly. 10 and 13, and a little bit of a scout 1v1 here. Tony, super weak and not able to clutch it out, but they, uh, I mean, they're they're up against some pretty stiff... I, dude, the ball is so annoying. It, yeah. I am up. In my oh, yeah. Thing. Oh, no, yeah, for sure. Even at sixes, dude, it's mad annoying. It's just like it's just like medics shooting out random arrows instead of healing their, their players. It's like, dude, come on, just just stop with the freaking skill shots. Focus on actually killing me instead of this yeah. gimmicky bullshit. But no, in MGE, I don't know. I, but yeah, it's, there's probably it probably is a tilt factor, you know, staying on the mental. <laughs> it's like, oh, it's just hitting me with these skill shots all game free. Uh oh, hit scan versus hit scan. Twenty HP. Ooh. Ooh. 20 cups, Tony clutch. coming out on top, yeah. Very, very clutch from Tony. Uh, just kind of uh, getting that one in there. And no, yeah, 100% agree. The ball can be just be, can be a big tilt factor. I'm surprised. I wonder if we will see any Market Gardener shenanigans. Because that is oh, another thing that, like, maybe. It, right. it just, like, it. sure, you got it. But why? Why? Please, why? Especially in MGE. And, like, a sixes game you know no no screw that especially in sixes dude because it's like how can you guys not protect me hello as a medic anyway it's like this dude's just flying in not shooting at you just beaming on me and you can't even shoot him once to pop him back no nah, dude I've, I, I've been burned many a time dude i hate market garden sixes that is that is a point of sore contention for me that is completely that is completely <laughs> fair honestly you know i mean hey, those are also the times that the medic you know what as the meta you might i try like, my you know, best to dodge it. it but it's like you guys are on high ground dude you got the you got the hit scan exactly oh okay <laughs> so currently it's gonna be 13 16 and they uh 
They're just going to be trying to track down this lone wonder and gun him down, which they do. And so only a two-point differential at the moment. Still 100% doable for Tony and Math, which Absolutely. would definitely be an upset um, against uh, Wonder and Alexandros, who have a uh, quite a bit more uh, higher level experience than them, though. But, you know, I know Math, uh, he's, a, he's a demon, you know, when it comes down to it. Oh, yeah, if you're an MGE Lord, I mean, you're an MGE Lord. You, you don't really need Six's experience to just absolutely shit on kids in MGE. We, we've, see, we've seen plenty of people where you're like, who is this guy? And they're just sitting on MGE servers 24-7, taking on any and all comers, you know? <laughs> no, 100%. They're just, like, like, posted up there on Ammo Mod, and they just wait for someone to enter their domain. It's just really unfortunate for, for, uh, for Wonder and them, because they're getting the, this red side down to red HP almost every single time. But then by the time, you know, Wonder comes in or Alexandros, they're equally as weak, but with a player advantage. So, I mean, it's just one mistake and that's all she wrote. And yeah, bringing the score up to 18 to 15, Wonder and Alexandros in the lead, three points over Math and Tony. Big old bounce from both soldiers coming in hot. Tony gonna be taking the 1v1 versus the soldier. And actually, Math taking out Alexandros. So this is a player advantage for this red side. Now all I have to do is just by their time and weight, Wonder had 18 HP and it was not enough. So they're going to be 18 to 16. Two points is all Wonder and Alexandros need to move on to the next bracket. And I think we are going to be getting into the best of threes here pretty soon, which will require an RGL pick ban sort of deal going on there in order to determine what maps are playing. We've just been seeing uh, Badlands Middle for all of these, and I'm, I'm not really too surprised, but I would like to see a little bit more variety. Although, if we had a, a B ball, for the grand finals that would be so high holy a b-ball for the grand finals would yeah. be spectacular dude that would a uh that would change the game honestly that, that would be a, well, a real game changer by definition oh. yes it would be a different game <laughs> <laughs> it would would that would that even count i mean it is it, it is it's on mge servers but is it really mge i don't know I mean, the it's, jury, it's all, jury might it, be out on that one eh, I'll, I'll give it to him but Wonder and Alexander Stu cleaning it up 20 to 17 the final score. Unfortunate for Math and Tony. But well fought. Good little uh good little ditty. Yeah, that Fun is extremely watch. well thought. And I I think they're a uh going up next maybe against Gout if my uh uh Oh actually yes. no, is that is this Peru Peru Tech Evo that we just saw? I don't Versus A T. Okay, oh, so I see they're okay. going against money and bitches. Yes, they are going up against money and bitches. Uh, <laughs> and a amazing a uh, amazing combo that a, uh, the world has never seen before. I'm <laughs> not quite ready yet. <laughs> uh, all right, all we're right. gonna check on the status of other matches going on, seeing what's worth watching. And uh, see. All right, Dolphin so Rider we've got Pingufi. Do there's an EU there's team. There's an in the EU server? team. Uh oh, that be... that is wacky. Well, I mean, they have uh, apparently made it at least to the quarterfinals, because um, this is, I assume, what they're playing now, maybe. So that's pretty pretty impressive, you know, and you can see, I don't know if our production can press tab, oh. but, you know, they got that solid 148, 135 oh. thing. They're feeling the burn. Well, they're going to be playing Scott for sure. They're not going to be going on any projectile classes. I can guarantee that right now. Yeah, they, they kind of have to at the moment. Uh, I don't quite know what their score is because they, uh, unfortunately, it's uh, blanked out for us, but we can see that a... Uh, June and Co. have got a uh, 13 points, and uh, you know they got a soldier on their side, so gonna be trying to wrap this one out, take it home for the boys here in NA. But you know the EU guys, shout outs for them that are playing it. I don't know what time it is for them as well, but this might be some serious late night, early morning TF2 for them. It's like uh, two in the morning at least. Oh, so okay. yeah, right? Do I have that math right? Yeah, it's like two in the morning. And it's two. It's two in the morning in Zagreb right now, so that's pretty far east. So it's like one. Yeah. So regardless, I mean, you know, maybe for some people, one a.m. is prime MGE hours. You know, you well, yeah. don't. You never. You never know. 
you know, what are you gonna some do? People... Sleep? Nah. <laughs> That's true. There's You're 50 keys gonna... on the line, dude. Yeah, I'm gonna show up. I don't give a crap about thing. That's true. That's true. I mean, I could just play scout. Yeah, it's easy. It's simple. Shrimple. 50 keys, 50 keys in euros? Oh my god, that's value. That is big value. I don't know if they are going to get it because they only need four more um, points. That is the uh, uh, June the team. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, and they did switch. Oh my goodness. Okay, this is going to be high ping soldiers. So maybe feeling like they got to change it up. Going to be very <laughs> impressive now if they win because, you know, I mean, 150 ping soldier it's is not fun. a. Uh, it is not fun. Hell, 80 oh. pink soldier isn't fun. I don't know how the hell they're gonna do that. <laughs> Ooh. I mean, it, it would June. be nice to see if he hits an air shot. Yeah, June gonna be trying to duck and dodge, but unfortunately is gonna get taken down. Now it's gonna be the lone scout up, just playing super far back, just playing the kind of runaway scout that's so annoying in MGE, but I mean, when there's things to win, you gotta understand why they would do it. Playing around, they oh, only gets it. Ooh. And they both had 45 HP, so that's about as even as he could have gotten. Very even. So it looks like. Oh. Oh, 20 to 19. Oh my. They. Oh, they that couldn't so do it. Close. Damn. E representatives out by one point. Heartbreaker. Hate to see it. Love to see it. Love to hate to see it. Damn. Yeah, that was a uh, incredibly yeah. close. I wish I would have known they were in there sooner, because, yeah, I would have been rooting for the EU guys much sooner if I would known they'd been in there. Yeah, Mostly just, just for the exotic factor. Yeah. I mean, it's impressive, you know, that they uh, did as well as they did, considering one, the ping, and also, you know, late night gaming. But, say, uh, I think also uh, Logan on the other side of the... Uh, of the bracket has won his games as well. I think as the G6 squad against GTO. Oh no. I believe. Logan plays against the Siege Burp team. This is going to be fun. Oh. Uh, uh, which one is that there, Josh? Okay. Oh, this one. Okay. So we're going over to the G6 match. That is an yes. amazing server pass rate, by the way. All of them are like some random gibberish, and that one is actually just a phrase. It's just it's just like yeah, yeah, two, <laughs> two words. So someone was a uh, someone was thinking about that one, but oh, who is who is that in the server right now? Who is that jumping out the sky? <laughs> oh, it's Tycho. Tycho in the server right now. Good old yellow. Yeah. Tycho currently on the Refugees Advance team, coming in on Soldier um, for this season. We're trying to find the Logan team, but in the meantime, so we have 18 versus Money Bitches and Gav versus the Pre Warlords. Wumpus against Dila, and they're still waiting for their. Uh, Wumpus is waiting for their next match in the uh, semifinals. Yeah, semifinals. So they were able to take down Della, um, which I assume had Della on it. Um, unless it's like one of those, a. Uh... Oh, yeah? Going back to the sex. Okay, so sex and Dolphin Rider team is going to be facing up. We're heading back to the server we just came from. This is chaotic, and I love it. This is this is the type of fast paced action we need in Team Fortress 2. We need oh, six yeah. matches to be over in five minutes so they can play like five six in a minutes day. or less. Yeah, it's just incredibly quick. Yeah, we get a hundred a hundred casts in. Well, make, yeah, make it more like baseball. You know what I'm saying? You have two days and all that kind of stuff, double headers or whatever. Exactly, exactly. Just pack it in there. Every game is just a mid fight. If you win the mid fight, you win the game. <laughs> oh, you can just streamline it down to the bare essentials. Hell yeah. <laughs> Oh my goodness! I did. Oh, and we do have it. It is gonna be Penguin Fi in June versus Gungan and a saxophone. Dolphin Rider. Gotcha. Pinkwood and Dolphin Rider. So yes. Gungan see, and see, see. see who's gonna draw first blood. Dolphin Ooh. Rider going down first, and then June in quick succession to the shotgun of Sax. So first point for the Gungan and Sax team. 
just now filling each other out, actually not committing. They're starting to take a little bit more seriously, not just plus wanting or WM wanting into them. Blah. But uh, Holy Dolphin Rider, yeah, he gets uh, yeah, he gets caught <laughs> in the low ground there by the by the Rockets. The Sacks going to finish off that second kill, so two to zero in quick succession. And yeah, it is a Scout and Scout versus Scout be Soldier Sacks and Gungan on the Scout and Soldier combination. To send out the spam rockets and the ball spam as well. And June finally taking some progression across the point. Going to get Sax down on the low ground. Taking the 1v1 versus Gungan. Will lose it in the end. Sax goes down as well. So it will be Scott versus Scott yet again. And Gungan going to come out on top of that one. 3 0. Early lead from this team. And just like that, yeah, but this, this Dolphin Rider sure loves to hide behind this hoodoo, but he keeps getting caught out every single time. It's not working to his favor. And just like that, Sax is going to be bouncing in and out of shit house to make sure the flank is covered. Still, still spamming from the low ground. Sax is pretty low health, but so is Gungan now as June comes down across the point, puts some pressure on, and gets the kill onto Sax. Eventually, now Gungan just with 3 HP will mean that it is Dolphin Rider's first point, 3 to 1. And this Dolphin Rider, man, just loves to hang out by the two to Penguin Fies doing the rest of the work. In the meantime, but Gungan going to go to Logar and try to take the fight to them. But Sax, in the meantime, will get taken down by Pinglefy. And now Dolphin Rider going to get the kill on the Gungan. Now 3 to 2. Very close to tying this one up, just one point away. June finding Sax on Logar and going to leave him to his own devices. We'll take the fight to Gungan instead, who falls back down. Now as Sax comes back on top, it will be Dolphin Rider getting the kill on that one. That's just a 2v1. Gungan with 56 HP does take down June oh. in the meantime. Gungan? 93 HP. Down to 75 HP. now. 34 HP on a Logar and trying to find this point for his teammate. Ooh, 20 HP, sends the ball sailing, does not hit its mark. It is just Pinglefy left with 50 HP, but Gungan with the lower HP will leave this one tied up 3 all. Yeah, they've been able to tie it up, and really great stuff from them. I, I think it really comes down to, can Sax hit enough spam damage? Uh, because the last few times he's been going down early, and it's just been on Gungan to try and uh, 1v2 the last two scouts, and it uh, hasn't been able to do it so far, but that time we did see Sax bomb in and was able to get an early pick on a scout, so uh, this time, however, and just that instant just meat shots coming out from June uh, to take them down there, or, my bad, uh, what is it? Uh, it's just interaction. Say what's in the server, I keep getting mixed up. No. Yeah, it's uh, it's it's all right, you know. They, they aliased as it. I think they're I think they're okay with it. But yeah, it has been back and forth, and I think this is really down to if Sax can hit enough spam damage to allow Gungan to clean up on it. Because otherwise, if those scouts are just playing back and going with the pistol spam and you know, the chip shot damage, it's gonna be pretty hard for Sax to have an impact here. As now we are in a little bit of a scout one v one dance around the hoodoo. Gungan gonna get the better of that, and it's gonna be five all even. Stevens. Yeah, tied up once again, and Sax going down earlier to the June Scattergun. It's going to be Gungan left alive. A little bit of health advantage, you know, June's 37. Uh, market's down to 87. So, yeah, he could play this well if he tries to single them out one by one, but they're going to just bunch up and group together and take them down like a pack of raptors, bringing that to 6 to 5. Gungan and Sax down now by one. Gungan taking the fight in the back of the train. Sax going to come in and help as June tries to run in a shithouse, but will get taken down. But Miss Prediction Mark is going to take down Sax. Right back at him and take down Gungan as well. So 7-2 and two, and they're starting to edge away with this lead now. And one of the main things is sort of like a fast break in basketball. You just have to wait until somebody turns their head. You can just plus forward him as a scout and put the scattergun in the back and get some bad damage out now as Gungan and Sass going to pick up one kill each to get their sixth point. 7-6. Gungan with 45 HP down under the ground. Going to take the low ground fight. Sass coming in to help. We'll clean up the kill in the misprediction markets now. 7-7 seven seven, tied up yet again and Gungan just spreading out the damage, spreading out the, the hurt with Sax close behind. Some pretty good health as well. Gets the fat direct on a June, but misprediction markets will make him pay for looking in the opposite direction. Gungan now taking out misprediction markets. Gungan with a little bit of health advantage over June. 31, chipping him down around the hoodoos. A little bit of a dance circle, ring around the rosy. Gungan coming out on top of that one. 7 to 8 now, and they've taken the lead back. And Sax now with the big bomb on the low ground. June going to come down off the high ground, getting blasted away with the fat direct from Sax. And actually, it's just him left alive with 27 HP in a dream. We'll chip down uh, Sax from the high ground. And actually oh with the 90 LG dude. taking out, taking out Dungan. Going to tie this one back up to 8 all. Seeing a target in the form of Sax actually thinks better of it and heads up onto the uh, the balcony but gets caught out overthinking it and will get taken down 9 to 8 now for Gungan and Sax. Sax in some trouble there. Gets bailed out by his teammate. Now June going down in misprediction markets not soon after Gungan. Bringing that to 10 to 8, and now Sax taking the height advantage on top of the crate is going to be following misprediction markets around. We'll get the splash, but misprediction markets hits the uh, the meat shot to finish oh, off yeah. the kill. Now with 14 HP, Gungan 70 HP. Both players on red berry lit, but he's spinning around all Ooh, around. Gets the kill to misprediction markets, too, but man. yeah, got flanked in the back, and now 10 to 9 for Gungan and Sax as he gets another kill onto June. Woo. 
it's just so back and forth. Both of these, uh, all of these players put in, in uh, so much work to try and clutch it out. We've seen these scouts clutch so many uh, 2v1s at the moment, and uh, we only got a 1v1 at the moment. Both of them fairly low. It's going to be a misprediction. Oh, hitting that with a good prediction on to the enemy. <laughs> <Woo>! <laughs> what a nice air shot. The first big one that we've seen coming out from Saxon. And if he can hit some more of those onto these scouts, it should be a wrapped game for them. But you know that misprediction and June are going to do their best to keep in it as long as possible. 1v1 now. We do have misprediction with the high ground. It is just going to be Gungan wrapping uh around as they uh, ooh, have a little uh, scuffle on the point. Misprediction of winning that. Going to tie it up yet again. Saxophone going in with these big bombs. It just mm. matters about how much damage he is able to get before he passes away. And uh, he did enough there. <laughs> before he gets sent back to the respawn room. Gets sent to way the Shadow it. Realm. <laughs> he gets it yoinked out, but um, luckily, you know, Gungan doing a really great job to capitalize off of that damage and get in while everyone's Ooh. distracted looking at him. It's been allowing them to take a uh, three-point lead Ooh. at the moment. 14 and 11. Really great damage coming out from Saxophone. Just lock and misprediction out in that corner. And once you get a scout like in a corner like that, it's so easy mm -hmm. to just kind of juggle them around. And if Saxophone can do a lot more of that, it's going to make this a lot easier for him and Gungan. For sure, and now Gungan and Sax are starting to run away with it, but not before Misprediction Marcus takes him out with a pistol of his own after Gungan takes out June. And now it's just a 49 HP. Sax left to fend for himself. Now down to 9 HP and 100 HP on that sky. That's going to be an easy round or point one for them. However, Gungan and Sax are starting to claw, claw away from them, starting to crawl ahead. And just like that, June down to 30 HP against a full health, no buff, Gungan. And unless something crazy happens, this could be the 16th point for them. 51 now on Gungan. Ah, but caught lacking as he's reloading and just standing. Still going to be an easy pick for Gungan. Take him out. 16 to 12. Four points separating them and four points to the win for Gungan. It's actually they can keep this up. Mr. Miss Prediction Markets last alive. Just taking some spam rockets. There's some splash from Saxon. That'll be the 17th point for them. Now Miss Prediction Markets down to 8 HP. Gungan cleaning him up. Now it's just June left alive with 50 HP and just so much damage. They're doing really well to support each other and putting out that hurt equally and jump to each other's aid when they need it. 18 to 12, two points needed for Gungan and Sax to go on to the next one. I think this is best of three at this point. I'm not sure, but either way, both players for the blue side are extremely hurt. This is doable from his prediction markets. He does get the pistol to Gungan, now it's just Sax left alive with 42 HP. Has to land a direct, very nice play with the uh, with the height advantage for him there and a little bit of uh, cover from the hill. Gonna bring that to 13 to 18, now five points separating them. They're not quite out of it yet, but Sax with the big bomb, gonna be cornering June and misprediction markets going down to the scouter gun of Gungan and now under the point is June meeting Gungan and actually both players very low they could be chipped down but so could June if he's not careful and just like that he does take down June or Sax with the chip and oh, Gungan June. as well a little bit of a two for clutch moment there but June balled instantly out of the gate already hurting and we'll get taken out by the bomb from Sax but Sax is 59 HP gonna be trying to live as long as he can and put out the hurt for his teammate misprediction markets is now being backed into a corner by the spam and the chips from Gungan and just like that pistol from Gungan gonna clean that one up now match point 19 to 14 all they do is just get one more point and they win this one sacks the bomb in putting in the pressure Gungan gonna come in and clean that up June with 16 HP take the fight against misprediction marks but they actually trade oh, they take each other out and misprediction marks actually gets the 15th point so barely a voice being sent to the shadow realm on that one gonna to stay alive for that much longer. They need four points to tie it up, five points to win it. And Sax with the fat direct from, from the uh, bomb, but will get taken down. And now it's a 2v1, Gungan with the health advantage. But if they do coordinate, this could go well for them, and it does. They take down Gungan, 16 to 19. Three points needed to tie it up for to win it all. Now they're just taking their time, slowly spamming it down. And now Sax looking for the bomb. Here he comes on the mission mission markets, gets shipped down, 77 HP. And actually, June doing well to, to uh, hold on to his health. And now both, red, or both blue players in the red for their help, this prediction markers with 30 HP just doing its best to dance around the Hooters and stay alive. Does chip down Sacks from a distance. Is now going in with 50 HP. Actually, they don't know where he is. He's in the he's house. Playing this corner. Yeah. Oh, he's coming back out now. Oh, spotted out. And now they just had to bunch up, but they could both be chipped down if they're not careful and barely missing the ball. Gunga with 38 HP. Oh, can he land the chip shots? No, he can't. No. Gets jumped up by Miss Prediction Markets 17 and 19. So close. This is coming down to the wire. Go for it. Sax bombing in, trying to isolate the scout, and they are going to be able to do so. This is their best opportunity so far to close out this out. Question is, is he going to be able to 2v1, and it's mm. not going to happen. Gungan and Sax 
taking it 20 to 17. Very close, extremely back and forth. And they, uh, they're saying they're GGs, so maybe they don't think it's a uh, best of three. Oh, it's a BO1. Okay. Yeah, that's a one. It is confirmed. BO1. So Saxon Gungan going to be moving on. Who doggy? That was intense, man. They had the uh, the early lead, right? It's in the uh, just just back and forth. Tons of uh, lead changes. I think that might go down in the ESPN Classics right there. <laughs> it will go down in the ESPN Classics of historical TF2 moments. <laughs> I mean, if it, dude, if it showed up on ESPN, I'd be so hyped. G6 and Yari versus somebody else. We're hearing it's a 15-15 match right now. We're going to be trying to get this one. It's on the one you just sent, correct? Okay. Loading in now. Ah! Ah! Can't click. Stalemate! You're all losers! Okay. Rigged. Rigged! Ooh. Oh, wait. It's Tycho. Is it? Yeah. Wait, what's his name? I thought he yeah. was yellow. Uh, Dark Pig. Oh, Dark Pig. Okay, so it was 17 to 15. Uh, don't know who for it. Wait. Yeah, I don't. So you had. Oh, wrong con. Oh, yeah. There's a freaking server timer. Yeah. Uh, so Dark Pig and. Uh, FSN. Don't know who that is, but Dark Pig is Tycho of Refugee fame. On the advanced team season. Rive and Tycho. Okay. Oh, Rive and Tycho versus a uh, Yite and Lugan. So we have the invite players versus the advanced players? Question mark? Skin interesting. This should be the real invite qualifiers, shouldn't it? <laughs> <laughs> just, do, just do NGE duels, man. Figure it out that way. Yeah, so it was 17 15. I think Tycho and Arrive were in the lead, so uh, you know a bit of pressure maybe on Yite and Logan to be able to close it out, which I'm I'm sure they definitely want to do. I'm confident that they wanted to go all the way in this, or at least expected within themselves to be able to head all the way. Even though I know Yite hasn't played in a while, I think his last season was maybe season ten on witness gaming and I, mm. I that was even before they went to fullerton land because i know he didn't go to fullerton land with them so it was before then um so he hasn't played in uh you know a fair few seasons but i That's am like riding a bike with mge really yeah even with sixes oh, yeah, it def it definitely is and you know I'd, I'd say that you know especially if you as long as you can aim you know i assume he's playing scout we didn't really get to see too much of it that you know that's probably the least uh, kind of time that you need to like kind of get back into the flow of things like you know maybe soldier sure you know rocket jumping maybe your hops aren't as good as they used to you gotta kind of remember how to do that or you know demo man you know remembering the pipes and everything like that but scout is a uh can be like you said like riding a bike is uh, looks like uh they're getting back in to the server Gonna change it up to two v two and make everything good. Well, that and they're restarting a... at the fifteen seventeen score. Yeah, mm -hmm. it, it raises a fair point because I see a lot of people talking about. Oh yeah, people you know played in invite back in two thousand ten two thousand twelve. Oh, they could never hang it out. It's like, dude, those guys were good for a reason. Those guys helped revolutionize the game for one. But it's like if you if you gave them like I don't know two weeks to get back in the groove of things, I'm pretty sure they could still hang at at, at, a, at a high level. I mean, they might be a lot. It, like like. Take, taking age out of the out of the equation, right? You know, because you know some of these dudes are like they gotta be in their mid thirties at least, you know. But with that, uh, you know, that notwithstanding, pretty sure a lot of these cats that played in by back in the day could still hang if they really wanted to. But yeah, missing missing three seasons that's nothing comparatively speaking. So not not all too uh, surprising. And no, with, MG, with MGE, it's like you don't really have to no game sense per se, you know. So it's just purely warming up your. Your, uh, your old aiming muscles and getting back into that group of thing. Nothing too yeah. required. Yeah, that is 100% true as we uh, wait for G6 to uh, start versus Tycho 
and Rive, Tycho, like you said, on the refugee squad in advance. And, you know, got uh, big expectations for them. You know, hopefully, hope to see them in advanced playoffs. I think they definitely got the roster uh, to do so and take it the distance. But also, you know, same thing. Logan on Froyo Tech. Alias is G6, but he's going to be on Froyo Tech for this season, I think, as their demo man. And, you know, he's been on Froyo Tech before. Um, he's been on G6 before. The man is just a monster wherever he goes and whatever he does. I mean, he just hits pipes, hits air shots. He's like just going all over the place and he makes it look so easy and just so simple mm -hmm. it's quite impressive yeah no it, it, it's i don't know i mean i i've obviously hung around the, the lower divisions of tf2 for a while just keeping my my finger on the pulse and it's like yeah you know some of those cats are really good but man when you get to invite yeah the, the skill disparity the skill floor is just so much higher than what you're used to seeing and just watching it in motion it really is you know, it's akin to watching a professional, uh, like football player, play the game or whatever. You know, they got that that skill. Just it's it's scary because they do it so nonchalantly, and they'll just completely shit on you if you're not if you're not ready for it. Yeah, no, yeah, that 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 is the thing. It's like a uh, I forget who it was. This one this one NBA player. He had like a show where like because he was like the not like the worst NBA player, but he was like, yeah, he wasn't that good. But uh, he like went to uh, different schools, I think, or like colleges to a uh, like play other people. And it looks like we are going live. I guess this is uh, real is going to be first to a uh, well different for each team. First to five for G6 and first to three for uh, Tycho and Rive. Though I don't see the score at the moment. So a one to zero uh, for. Oh. Yeah, so Logan has uh, 16, Dark Pig with 17. Round timer is going to reset this again, I think. Uh, no, okay, cool, cool. So, uh, just like that, tied up one to one, but that means that Dark Pig is at 18, and now 17 for G6. So, uh, Tycho needs two more, Tycho and Friend need two more, and Logan needs uh, three more. Well, they only yeah, need well, one now, I so that's think they really only matters. need one more. Yeah, that's it. Yeah, that is the only thing that matters. So they could win it here, folks, and knock out like a G6. We're definitely going to be, I'd say, the fan favorites. Ooh. At least one of them coming into it. But, you know, they're fan favorites for a reason. And if they can keep on hitting shots, they might be able to stay into it. Question oh. is, with Rive taking oh. down Logan, now it's just going to be Rive versus a uh, Yite. Who is going to be able to get the batter? of it they're gonna be just <gasps> dancing around the hoodoo and i think that was it that's it yeah that is going to be it that's going to be Tycho and rive taking down yite and logan and that is going to be a fairly a very big upset yeah it would have been even better if uh so everything gets screwed up <laughs> i kind of just inflated at the moment but yeah i mean because it's already intense enough you know when you're when you're building up to 20 but when you start all right first to five huh okay geez this got real real quick <laughs> No, I know. It's just like, yeah, and kind of your rhythm is thrown off a little bit. You got to get back into the momentum, back into the swing of things. By the time you do that, it's already done. It's already yeah. over. Yeah. You know? Unfortunately, you know, I couldn't, couldn't finish my a, a story about the NBA basketball player. <laughs> we'll but finish that's it now. Right. You got time. <laughs> we do got time. As a, uh, I will say, this is a uh, us continuing the Jeebus 2v2 MGE Cup. I think we're heading into the semifinals, but. Uh, just speaking of it, like it was this uh, kind of not bad, but bad NBA player. But he went to like schools and colleges, and he just was like, "All right, you think I'm bad? Let me just dunk on you to show you how bad you are." <laughs> Comparison. Yeah, That's just grown what he ass did. man dunking on college kids. Sure, that doesn't seem unfair. <laughs> but it was like you know, it, it was kind of like the the worst guy in the NBA is still better than like the majority of people type of thing. Yeah, and yeah, that yeah. was a. Uh, that was kind of the moral of the story, and you know, even even Yite today, or an uh, extremely out of practice uh, clockwork called... or something like that, could still still do wonders. Was it called Swagger? No, that's an actual show. No, it was the it was the name of the NBA. Uh, it was his name type of thing. I I forgot I forget what it was, but he would just kind of like go around and just kind of like show just like how good he was, even though he was kind of like the worst in the. Oh, NBA, uh, Ryan I mean? Scalabrine? Maybe. I 
think that sounds right. Yeah, yeah, I'm looking at this video. Yes, yes, it was him. Yeah, okay. Never heard yeah, of yeah, him. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> I, I well, at least so. <laughs> I mean, he was... <laughs> He was he wasn't the best, but you know that that was kind of like his his thing, and he did it. It was kind of like eye opening just to see like how the skill disparity, um, or just the differential between these people. As they uh, we are going in to the semifinals, it's going to be Sax and Gungan versus Yum Yum and Scratch, and Rive and Tycho versus Deadly Seed and Gaia. So those are going to be our two. Yep, Two yep. battles going on. It should be noted that Scouty, not part of it, you know, the, the defending champ, not able to a uh, defend any longer. They uh, Scouty and his teammate won it the last time, but not able to have a similar success this time. So we're gonna have a new champions on our hands. Number one. Yeah, I mean that's the way the cookie crumbles in a, in a tournament for MGE. It's not. I wouldn't expect like a dynasty, you know what I'm saying? But uh, <laughs> I mean, imagine though. <laughs> well, yeah, but uh, that's not to say that Scotty isn't good. But uh, yeah, I'm pretty sure if he could play, it would end up being a dynasty. But this is sort of you know like a like a sort of ladder uh, tournament, you know what I'm saying? Uh, yeah, like, uh, like 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 ladders, you know, you you up that one, whatever. Yeah, challenge the person oh, yeah. above you and below you, below you type of deal. Definitely. And so I um hopefully I guess coming up here. I I assume now we're gonna be heading into the best of threes, and I do we agree are. with you. It would be nice to uh see some non uh Badlands mid because you know there's a there's a whole world out there, folks, of a uh <laughs> different a, uh, different MGE maps. Even though I know Badlands mid is kind of like the most uniform. It's good, you know, it's fun for scouts, fun for soldier, fun for demo and you know, sometimes for like other ones, you know, it's not not super fun for the other classes. Like, you don't want to be scout be scouting on Badlands Spire. Or Why anything. not? Like, you can get I mean, you really could. good at fighting over Greybridge, dude. <laughs> What's not to get? That's a hundred percent true. You just or become you can like fight over the king. bats, so you can fight over trash. I mean, there's more than just Spire on Spire. Uh, that's true. There is more than Spire on Spire. <laughs> you could be the king of trash, you know, <laughs> which a, uh, you know, you, you might not be too contested for in all honesty, but you know, I, maybe it's better to be the king of something than the king of nothing, you know? So <laughs> even if it's just, trash, even if it is actual trash, <laughs> donkey doo doo garbage. <laughs> <laughs> but, <laughs> oh, so I guess it's going to be Blands products and then Metal for these three maps coming up. Oh my! You, oh my lord! You you looked through that a lot quicker than I could ever. I looked at <laughs> no, I looked in the game. That's where they said it. Oh, I thought you looked at the uh, Discord thing because holy cow! I yeah, could no, not. they they printed a novel. I know, no, I took the path of least resistance. I just checked the in-game chat. Okay, damn. All right, so it's gonna be starting out on Badlands. Then we're gonna be heading over to the product. Oh, apparently, is... by the way, apparently Scratch was pissing at one point. That's what these say. I don't know. Guess we needed to know that. Oh, okay. So <laughs> that's why they're that's why they're taking a break. Yeah, I assume yeah. is the a. Uh, it's uh, what's going on. Well, with that mentioned, I guess that's a perfect opportunity to tell you about our sponsor, Gamer Bucket. Uh, they're running a sale right now, so get your own Gamer Bucket. Stop wasting time going to the bathroom when you could be gaming. Gamer Bucket, get one today. <laughs> Actually, this is the Gamer Bucket 3.0. It's, it's a lot more ergonomic design. It fits under most seats. And um, it comes with a year of free maid service, so you don't even have to get up and empty your Gamer Bucket. We'll do it for you for a year. So, yeah, head on over to GamerBucket.com. <laughs> put in promo code FIRESIDE for 20% off of your purchase and subscription for a year. Who is... Who, who, who's doing this? <laughs> I didn't sign up for this. I got to check my contracts. <laughs> I got to check my contract. Wait a second. What did you put in there, Jay? What did you put in there? <laughs> Holy... <laughs> <laughs> yeah, we're ready. We're ready. Whoo! Oh man, 
All right. So this is going to be... Who is it going to be again? It is going to be <laughs> Yum Yum and Scratch versus Saxon Gun Gungan on <laughs> Badlands mid, product mid. And then if we get there, Metalworks mid. God, I hope it goes to all three. Wait, yo, what are they doing? <laughs> <laughs> let's go, let's go, let's fucking go. All right, so a... Uh... Just letting Wait, them know. What is, what is going on? I just realized. Yeah, that, that is a wacky taunt. I have not seen that one before. Oh. Um, Use creatively. as Now we have Gungan and Sax in Yum Yum and Scratch. And it looks like we are going to be going live on the first match of the semifinals. And, they, uh, you know, big names all around. It's going to be Scout and Scout versus Scout v. Soldier. It's going to be a Yum Yum uh, trying to 2v1 to be start things off here. Not going to do it, and that is going to be Gun Gun and Sax taking the early lead here. And I think, once again, it's going to come down to can Sax get enough uh, spam damage uh, to really help out Gun Gun here? Uh, if not, it's just going to be Yum Yum, I think, and uh, Scratch just kind of walking away with it. It's now Yum Yum in a 1v1 right here with Gun Gun. Going to be trying to put the pistols yeah. into them, and they do connect. That is going to be them uh, taking it 2 1. Yeah, I think the big strat here is to just get Saks out of the equation so that if it's just a 1v1 versus Yum Yum and uh, and uh, Gungan, it, I mean, come on, dude, let's be real. I think Yum Yum's going to win that pretty much every time. But it, it's not that for now. It's just Scratch and Saks, and Scratch is sitting at a healthy 7 HP. Meanwhile, Saks on the low ground with 72 now, getting shipped down to size, trying to pick him up with the shotgun. And Connect. Oh, jumps out of the hoodoo, playing it real dangerous and close to this. And actually jumps up in his face and gets the kill. Oh my Ooh. god. So yeah, third point for him. And just from, from absolutely nowhere, from the depths of hell, with 7 HP in a dream, manages to get the point for his for his team there. Now 3-2, to two, Gungan and Sax down one. And just the scouts trying to trade some damage across the point. Sax will go down first in this round. Yeah, I'm getting the kill onto him. And now it's just Gungan trying to fight for his life underneath the point against two scouts. And yeah, Scratch on his back with the pistol going to score up the fourth point for them and now scratch being chased by sax underneath gonna meet yum yum trying to go for the little old switcheroo bait play but actually not gonna work in the favor scratch will go down so it's just a 2v1 but both players in the red for the blue side gunga gonna clean him up gonna bring that to four to three gungan and sax still down by one but yum yum goes down early to the scatter gun of gungan and now she's scratch left live with 22 hp manages to pistol down sax but gungan with the health advantage hopping over the train is going to be scratch and he takes Ooh. him down with six hp and just like that five to three now two points separating these two teams yum yum and scratch ahead as sax goes down early yet again and now 2v1 versus the gungan not going to go in his favor now three to six in favor of yum yum and scratch from the low ground Chipping down Gungan. Here comes Sax jumping in from the high ground with the shotgun. They're going to whip that out. Take him down to size. And finally, Gungan and Sax going to reply with a round of their own. Six to four. And now Sax taking their early pressure from both scouts. It's just that that pistol, that 90 LG is so deadly from Yum Yum. But he will go down with, the, with eight HP. Sax with one of his own. And now Scratch taking the fight against Gungan. Ooh, with the pistol. Going to secure that one. Six to five. Sax had to creep up from behind with the shotgun, but it wasn't necessary. Now Scratch taking the fight against Sax on top of the point, and Yum Yum and Gungan in the meantime. Actually, no, Sax going to try to jump down and interfere oh. with a little bit of an ambush, but that will result in Yum Yum Scratch going up 7-5. to five. Now on the low ground is Yum Yum getting jumped on by Sax, and Gungan collectively will get the kill. Scratch will take down Sax with the pistol. Now Gungan with 71 HP will clean up Scratch, bringing this to 6-7. to seven. They haven't managed to claw back the lead, but they are staying in close contention. So it is pretty close in this first match on Badlands. Middle Sax getting the kill and Yum Yum with the Rockets. So it's just Scratch left alive to fend for himself. Manages to take down Gungan down to 36 HP with some fat meat shots from Gungan. That's going to bring it to 7 to 7, tied up. Uh, I think for the first time this oh. match. Yeah, I think, yeah, the first time this match, it is going to be a tie game. And uh, however, Yum Yum and Scratch are going to get their lead right back, making it 8 to 7. And, uh, you know, it's really just these scouts just trying to dodge all of the spam from the soldier. Because if they can dodge all the spam from Thax, they're going to be so much healthier. And they're going to be able to take any 2v1s or 1v1s that they need to at the end of the fight. As they, uh, 
I uh, question is, can Sax just kind of get that early damage out? And uh, he is going to be able to do that time with the help of Gungan. going to be able to make it a one-point differential. And now it's going to be Focus firing down Scratch over on that Hoodoo. It's only going to be Yum Yum up. Uh, he is going to be able to get two. That is insane with the pistol. If you can hit all those pistol shots, you can do so much damage, man. Oh, and yeah. so because of that, he's going to be able to net his team another point. Going to be going up 11 to 8. And seems like they're getting their momentum, finding their groove just a little bit. Uh, they are going to lose down one. So this is looking good for a Gungan and Saxophone. And yeah, they are with some nice rockets. Going to be able to take down Yum Yum now. Just going to be uh, trying to focus fire Yum Yum down. They do take him down, but not before Sax goes down as well. Going to be dancing around the hoodoo. A little bit of a scuffle on the midpoint. And that's going to be Yum Yum. And uh, Scratch losing that, making it only a one-point lead. And now a tie game. And, you know, with both, all of these players, and they can just go so huge so quickly. And uh, just because of the nature of the format, you know, you're never out. You know, even if it is 19 and 11, you know, that's what we end up seeing right here. It's still possible for any of these players to just come up clutch and come up big. Yum Yum with some nice pistol shots to be taken down. Saxophone there as he tried to hit the shotgun shots. Now dancing around the hoodoo. Both these scouts, Gungan, going to be going in. It's going to be trying to Ooh. jump on top, but is going to be able to shoot him down. And 12 to 12, it's just when anyone gets a lead, the other team is right there, number one, to just hit them back. And it's, it's just so close, so tight. And you got to imagine it's super tense as well. Oh, yeah, I'd love to hear the comms on this one because I can imagine it's pretty like, I mean, some of these players, sure, they're pretty calm, but I think Saxophone is kind of freaking out right now. He's hit, he's hit the rocket, he's hit the rocket, blah, blah, blah. Yeah, anyway, Gungan, cleaning up the kill on the Yum Yum. Scratch now with 61 HP, 35 HP on Sax. It's a dual threat. Gungan going to clean up the kill. And now for the first time, they're taking the lead, at least in a while. 14 to 12, up by two. And there's a lot riding on this. We're getting down to the nitty gritty. Once again, the first place of this uh, tournament gets 50 keys. I mean, 25 keys per player. That's a pretty hefty payout for just playing a couple hours of some MGE. It's the most I've ever heard of anybody get to play an MGE. And just like that, it's thir or 15 to 12 now. Three points separating these teams. Gungan getting the cone to scratch. Yum Yum taking out Sax. So Scout be Scout. And just like that, Yum Yum taking out Gungan. 13 to 15. Gungan taking some early pressure from Yum Yum. Scratch still looking for some uh, players to find, and he finds the Rockets of Sax instead now with 95 HP. But both guys going to be hunting him down, and Yum Yum going to pin up the kill on that one. 15 to 14, so they stand to tie this one up yet again. Sax putting out the spam rockets and whipping out the shotgun, going to take down Yum Yum with said shotgun. Now with 50 HP in a dream, we'll find Scratch behind the train car. Kills himself with his own rockets, but Gunga going to clean up the kill onto Scratch with his scatter gun, bringing it to 16 to 14. And this looks like it could be an upset if Gungan and Sax continue the trend. Yum Yum going to have something to say about that with the scatter gun of his own. And Scratch going to clean up Sax with his. Going to bring that to 16 to 15. Four points for Gungan and Sax in order to win this and bring this to the third or second map. Jeez. Uh, and yeah. yeah, Yum Yum taking out Sax with 7 HP. Gungan at 59. Ooh! Ooh! And from the high ground, taking him down. Gungan missing the ball right out of the gates early on. Taking the 1v1 versus Yum Yum. And now Scratch coming in. Or yeah, no, only two more points. Mm -hmm. Yeah, th only two points between these teams at the moment. Only three for Gungan and Sax to win. It' gonna be shooting him down in the corner. There, he's gonna be scratches running in on Gungan and oh, nice, like super track. close now. Oh, nice rocket! And Gungan's gonna be able to clean that up from Saxophone. And Scratch. now we're gonna be playing under the point. Both of them Woo! super weak with the pistols out, but Gungan with the scatter gun shot is gonna take him down. Now as we head into another round, Gungan and Sax are only two mm. points away from getting at Gungan, making that dream a bit closer by taking down Yum Yum Saxophone with some nice rushes to take down Scratch. Only one point for these two to get this first map under their belt. We do see Saxophone bombing in, but he is, but Gungan with the blue Lead damage actually onto Scratch gonna take him down, but Yum Yum says no way, Jose. They're in it still just a little bit longer. Okay, we see Sax with the shotgun out already, just gonna be oh, trying to man. pump focus. in that spam damage. Yeah, the focus fire from the scouts. Now Gungan has to hit the 2v1. He does hit the one. Can he hit the two? Yum Yum's only eight health, but Yum Yum comes in clutch. He only had eight health there, any shot from a uh, Gungan there was going to take him down, but he hit his shot just that bit much faster and is able to make it an 18-19 game down to the wire scratch. Oh. He's going to make it a 19-19 <laughs> game extremely down to the wire. Our scratch and uh, Yum Yum going to be able to clutch it out or Gungan and Sats going to be able to close what should have been Ooh. their game based on the lead. Now it's going to be a 1v1 on the point. Gungan versus Scratch. Oh. Yum Yum is going to be taken down. <laughs> 
<laughs> Damn, that was absolutely the closest match we've seen so far today. And uh, yeah, so it's going to be product next, which is pretty much the same thing as Badlands, right? It's it's sort of scout and soldier centric. So kind of a toss up. But with the double scouts, I mean, there's a lot of uneven ground and a lot of jumpables. You know what I'm saying? So yeah. it, it's I, I think it benefits the, the double scout combo more uh, than the, the scout soldier, especially with the low skybox. There's not really anywhere for him to go. So we'll see how they play that one out. As they switch over to product, and yeah, uh, Yum Yum and Scratch are doing really well. I mean, both the, both of these teams are actually doing really well to support each other when they need to, and uh, coming to each other's aid. And there's actually uh, during the last few rounds, um, there was a moment where they both went to low ground underneath the point, which you would think would be bad for a scout against a soldier at any point, but they actually did it to sort of split them up and separated them, and then they hopped on uh, Gungan, and then Sax had to come down sort of unaware of what was going on, and they flipped and turned on him and got the kill on him. But here we go. Take, starting out the second map on Product Gungan and Sax versus Scratch and Yum Yum. Who would draw first blood? Sax going to get the first Ooh, nice kill rocket. on the Scratch. 41 HP on Yum Yum. Sax going to clean that up with the shotgun, so it will be first point to Gungan and Sax. Yum Yum taking the fight against the Sky. Takes a fat rocket for his trouble and will go down behind the point to uh, Gungan. Sax going to get the kill onto Scratch with a shotgun of his own. Sax coming out. Trying to put the hurt on the scratch and doesn't need him down. Yum Yum with 21 HP in the dream. Gungan with one gets the kill, but Sax is there to clean it up with the shotgun, bringing that to 3 0. Early lead for this team here on the blue side. Misses the midair air shot, but no big deal. Yum Yum's going to come and clean him up now. Gungan versus Scratch on the 1v1. Gungan with 27 HP and actually only one point separating between them. Tries to get the cheeky ball kill on him, but nothing doing. Will rely on the scatter gun instead to get the fourth point for his team. And now Scratch and Yum Yum looking like they're a little bit of a spot of bother, but. Scratch actually not letting that get to him as he takes down Sax and Gungan by himself with 4 HP remaining. So, very close one from them to get the first point for his team to finally respond back. But he's jumping all over the top of the rock now with a little bit of a flick rocket. Sax takes him down with no problem. But Yum Yum taking down Sax in response. Now, 10 points of health separating these two. Yum Yum putting out the hurt with a little bit of dancing around on top of the rock. Gonna take the second point for his team now. Only two points separating them. 4 to 2. First to 20. As you know, MGE. Second map of this semi final match. Yum Yum and Scratch getting a kill each. Bringing that to three to four, so they're looking like they're going to try to tie this up. If all goes well for them, Sax missing his rocks, but Gungan not missing his scattergun shots. And Yum Yum, ooh, making a miss with six HP. Ooh -hoo. Has to make something happen, but nothing doing. Gungan going to clean him up for the fifth point. And now Yum Yum in danger early on as Sax comes marauding around that corner. Actually, just completely ignores him, but turns around with the shotgun in hand. But Yum Yum gets the scattergun shot onto him, but Gungan will clean that up. Six to three now. Gungan with low HP at the start of this round here. Looking like he's going to get taken down. He does need by Yum Yum. And now it's just a 2v1 Sax with 8 HP. We'll get pistol down by Scratch. Bringing that to 6-4. Young and Sax still in the lead, however. And now Yum Yum taking the 1v1 with the help of Scratch. Coming in there at the very last second against Gungan. And now it's just Sax with 53 HP. Has to land a rocket, but nothing doing Scratch. Taking him down with the pistol. And these pistols are just absolutely dead deadly from both of these guys here. Just an uh, absolute X factor. Uh, coming yeah. in clutch when they needed to, and you need to have that scatter gun too. In case you miss all your pistols, but these dudes on this pistols now six to six, all tied up for the first time this match. Yum yum and scratch bringing it back. Yeah, they are doing wonders right now. Yum yum and scratch, and been able to get the lead in their favor because it was an early lead for Gunkin and Sax. Uh, and you know, I think you know you were kind of right about how Soldier is maybe not a. Uh, uh, super good, but I think Sax is doing wonders with it because, you know, because it is a, such a smaller map as we have a little bit of a 1v1 between Gungan and a uh, Scratch there. You know, the Soldier doesn't have to rocket jump to be able to get into a position to do, like, good damage with his, uh, uh, his rocket launcher, you know what I mean? So he doesn't really have to, you know, waste his ammo like that or hurt himself to really be able to get into the fight and help out his scout. So I still think it's actually honestly fairly even and Especially with a uh, saxophone, you know, rocking the shotgun and hitting some nice shots with it. He's been able to have a, a pretty big impact, I'd say, on this match and uh, really kind of help out Gungan kind of collect some of these kills as now we are going to see it's just a lone scratch going to be gunned down here as it is still a fairly even game. Only one point in the lead for Gungan and Sax right now as they are going to be able to take down Yum Yum who dances around that rock, the big rock, as now it's only going to be Scratch in a little bit of a 1v1 with Gungan. Gungan going to be able to clutch it out and now solidifying their lead as a two-point lead. Still not super dominant from any team so far. It's been extremely back and forth. 
Um, but now Gungan and Sax kind of, they, uh, uh, getting into the flow of things. We do see Yum Yum kind of disconnected on that right side, but that's going to be an opportunity for Scratch to jump in here and take down Saxophone. And he's going to be able to take down Gungan as well, so uh, going to be able to use that opportunity to come in and shoot the backs and get the kills. Now Yum Yum taking down Gungan in that connector area. <laughs> Saxophone in that connector area. You don't see too much fighting going on over there in a uh, product MGE, but, you know, it's got to be faithful to the product map so uh gonna be uh fun to see that happen now saxophone cleaning up scratch at the moment uh still only a two point lead for gungan and sax and it looks like they should be able to clean up yum yum yeah it was super weak there and i would like to see maybe yum yum and scratch they, uh, seems like they maybe get disconnected a little bit but you know that's kind of the power of scout you're just so quick you can just hype hop everywhere whereas a uh, saxophone has to play a little bit closer <laughs> And it's just amazing pistol work from Yum Yum. I mean, he's known as an MGE Lord, and he's really been showing it, but oh, my saxophone. I think that counts <laughs> as an air shot. That was an airborne scout, and he hit a nice rocket. He uh, helps delete Yum Yum with the help of Gungan. And they are going to be up 15 to 11. I think the biggest lead we've seen so far. Definitely still doable for Yum Yum and Scratch, but uh, Sax and Gungan are looking like they have got this map on lock. And if they win this, they're going to be going into the finals number one. Mm -hmm, indeed, yeah, they won 20 to 19 in that last one, and then 16 to 11. Now Gungan and Sax ahead by five, and now Sax versus Yum Yum gets popped up and then levitated by the shotgun of Sax. So that's going to be the 17 point for them. Three points to head on to the grand finals. That's separating them from potentially winning 50 keys. So yeah, the the goal is in sight, and I'm pretty sure Saxophone is salivating at least. I don't know about Gungan, but Scratch with four HP now against the 37 HP Gungan will not have what it takes to win that one. Uh, 18 to 11 now, two points separating them from the grand finals of this MGE tournament. Gungan now versus Yum Yum, 67 HP, battle over the point. Yum Yum trying to do a little bit of parkour over the rock, trying to make him miss as much as he possibly can, but ooh, not going to fool Gungan with one that one with a nice meat shot. 19 to 11, so yeah, no, I think this is actually the... Uh, they, they were they went 19 into 11, I think, last match, but uh, either way, 12 to 19. Now Yum Yum and Scratch, like we said before, not out of it yet. But now as Yum Yum goes down early, scratch, and there it goes. 20 to 12, final score. Two maps in a row for Gungan and Sax. They will head on to the grand finals. GG's all around. Very well played from Yum Yum and Scratch. But that soldier seemed to be the X Factor. Those rockets, man. You may not be able to hit a, a scatter gun or a shotgun, but if you can land a splash, hey, that's 40 free damage. Yeah, it was. Uh, it really seemed like, and it seemed like, you know, because... Project is kind of a smaller map, Project Mid at the very least. Mm. Uh, you know, it's a little bit easier for, uh, what is it, Saxophone to get into an optimal range uh, to be able to do uh, a lot more damage without having the rocket jump in, especially when you have shotgun on, yeah. you know, you know, rocket jumping and losing all of that health can be so much more costly. So really great stuff there. And I think we're going to be going on to our next semifinals match, which would be Tycho and Rive versus, uh, what is it, Deadly, Deadly Seed, Seed and Gaia. Mm -hmm. So, all right, let's actually do predictions. Who do you think is going to win this one? Ooh, I mean, it's interesting because we haven't seen, we've seen it, we saw a little bit of a uh, Yum Yum and Scratch, we saw a little bit of Saxophone and a uh, Gun Gun, but we didn't really see any of Tycho and Rive. And we didn't really see, we definitely didn't see any of Deadly Seed in <laughs> no, Gaia, I believe. So I, yeah. yeah, so I don't really know what they're going to a, uh, what they're going to do or like what classes they're going to play. I assume Tycho is going to be on Scout because even though he's going to be on Soldier of his season, I think he's uh, a bit more comfortable on his Scout when it comes down to it. And I think for a uh, Rive, I think Rive is also a Scout. So I think they, I would assume they double Scout this. And then on the case of Gaia and Deadly Seed, I think one of them's a demo, so we might see some yeah, demo action. Yeah. Gaia plays demo. So I, I assume the, uh, we're going to see some demo, yeah. He was in the qualifier we casted the other night. Right? Oh. Am I retarded? No, yeah, he was. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, well, you know what? There you go. The, the gaming squad. Oh yes, 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 yes. All right, so I, we do I have remember. the we have the map picks for this one. It's going to be Reckoner, Process. You're mm -hmm. joking. Nope. And then Badlands Mid. Holy Toledo's. Okay, Reckoner, 
process and Badlands mid. Yeah, that well, is quite the collection. Well, like it, it's like Reckoner. It's like okay, interesting. And then you're like process and like oh, the scouts. Okay, how are we gonna do that one? And then Badlands yeah. mid, just to wrap it up. I mean, that's uh, it's the most variety we've seen today. I, I sincerely hope they agree to do b-ball for the grand finals i would love to see that <laughs> i'd be so happy that would be amazing yeah if we saw if we got some b-ball in there and just to have them hop around and just uh dunk we should give them bonus points if they do like a slam dunk you know what i mean well yeah no we should do it if you if you play b-ball second place doesn't get a prize you get the first place and second place prize <laughs> <laughs> make, make it interesting you know what i'm saying <laughs> add a little bit of incentive if you do, if you play B ball and you win, you get all of the keys. You just okay, well, interactively relax. take them from everyone else. Uh, that, that's that's a, that's a bit dickish. Come on now, let's let's be uh, rational here. That's true. That's true. That's true. And, that's... and my eagerness for B ball, I have a uh, <laughs> proposed something uncouth. I'm extremely sorry. For shame. For shame. <laughs> uh, so yeah, it's fifty keys for first place. 20 keys for second place third gets 10 fourth will get five keys and then fifth to eight two keys so yeah a lot of dash being thrown around nice little prize pool cozy little tournament it's actually going uh well, about as quick as i'd imagine it would Been yeah, for yeah about what an hour and a half now and actually uh well, I, I thought i was going to see the score but never mind um but yeah 50 keys that's uh how much is a key going for now these days like like two something, you know. So that's say that's that's about a hundred buckaroonies, you know, which probably comes down to fifty bucks if you split it, you know, mm-hmm. for you and your a uh, you and your MG partner. So nothing nothing too shabby whatsoever. Really great actually to see this because you know these types of cups and things are always great to see the community uh, get involved and in, you know shout outs to uh, jeebus um i assume that's the, the the people who put it on it is the, the jeebus yeah the, the 2v2 mge cup so you know shout outs to jeebus um whatever whoever that is uh for kind of getting this on and you know they did it last time as well um because that's say uh, where we had scouty as the champion so uh, they've been doing it a little bit and it's always great to see this kind of community involvement and community engagement and uh, we here at Fireside are always happy to a, uh, uh, you know, promote that and take part in it as well. As a uh, gonna have to acclimate myself to Recogner. You know, I've played a, I played a fair bit of this on the DM servers. You it. know, I've not played a lot of it in actual season play, and I don't think I've ever played an MGE um, uh, kind of thing on this one. It's a, uh, it's very big. It's kind of like Badlands in that it is extremely, extremely big. There's a lot of places that, as a scout, you can just kind of run away and pistol spam from that, you know, like on product that you can't really do. Um, it's kind of like a, an amplified Badlands in that part because, you know, you've got like uh, this yeah. little ditch over here that you can just like hide in you know and just spam your pistol from and be super annoying and like all these awnings that you can stand on that um are going to be hard for a soldier to really do work in so um it is going to be rive and taiko on the double scout we at least have gaia up on demo so i think this may be a tough one um for him to have super impact and just because how how open it is but you know he's a top level demo man for a reason yeah i was gonna say this map feels like uh, Badlands up with extra steps, so it's pretty pretty fitting that you said it's like a bigger Badlands. But here we go, first map of this semifinals: Gaia and Deadly Seed versus Rive and Tycho. Boom Shakalaka, gonna be oh god, what are these aliases? I don't know. <laughs> Screw it, uh, you take it. I, I'm 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 already out of it. Fair enough, fair enough. So. Uh, yeah, Deadly Seed and Gaia going to be going with the first round just for the moment. And it uh, looks like both the scouts just going to be playing super spammy, which is kind of what I expected them to do because there's just so much space that Gaia would have to cross to really try and get into a good range to do, um, you know, some consistent damage with his pipes or anything like that. Now we are going to see, however, Rive going maybe a bit too early, and it is going to be Deadly Seed just running in and 
taken them down. So Deadly Scene being able to hit his ones and a bit more after that can be able to net his team a two point advantage. Whoa. And Gaia coming in with the big stickies and seems like Rive and a uh, Tyke on a bit of a predicament because once they get in close, we're just at the mercy of Gaia's nice pipes. And mm -hmm. at that time, however, they're going to be able to clean um, up. Great stuff from Tycho getting the finishing kill there as they, uh, they're just going to be playing the spam game. Rive kind of going over on the flank and a win is one against <laughs> Deadly Seed and the other against Gaia. And that is going to be an almost tie game, three to two, still in the favor of Deadly Seed and Gaia. But it looks like Tycho and Rive are kind of picking up the heat as now they're going to be taking down Deadly Seed. Gaia falls right after. And, uh, you know, it's kind of kind of a thing that we've seen so far with these uh, um, one hit scan, one projectile type classes that as soon as the hit scan goes down, it, the projectile class is soon to quickly follow. You don't really have that ability to kind of clutch out 2v2. I mean, you can, you can like 2v1 them, but it's so much more difficult, especially against two scouts who can just nimbly dodge all of your damage as we hit into a scout 1v1. Tycho versus Deadly C. Oh, he's super weak. Both of them are, but... Tycho can be able to just barely eke that one out, and they, uh, they're going to be able to take the lead here. Actually, yeah, for the first time, we'll not have Guy and uh, Deadly Save anything to say about it. They get one right back in quick succession. Five to four. And, yeah, I think the strat that they're mostly going for is just go around blind corners and hope for the best. <laughs> like, lose, lose track of them and then just sneak up on them. Because, yeah, there actually is a lot of... Uh, a lot of dead space, the dead ground that you can just sort of walk up, you know, un unspotted and uncontested. And it seems to be what they're doing. They're just holding their ground and waiting for somebody to poke around that corner. It's actually going to be Rive. The fat 106 health going to take down the low health Deadly Seed. And now Gaia with 120 HP of his own. And here comes the scout right on his ass. Going to give him a few meat shots. Give him a little how do you do. Going to bring that to 6 to 4. Tycho and arrive in the lead. Gaia desperately trying to help out a scout with some pills and some stickies, but nothing doing. Getting pistol back down, actually levitated by the pistol of Tycho. 25 HP pulls out the bottle, <laughs> thinks better of it, but gives him his back, and that will mean a seventh point for Tycho and Rive here on Reckoner. Uh, first map of the second semifinals map. So whoever wins this series will be going on to the grand finals to face saxophone and uh, uh, Gungan. Yeah. And now four to eight in favor of Tycho and Rive, so they're pulling ahead pretty handily here. Now Guy has left a little bit, you know, bewildered here, just trying his best to help his Scott out, but I mean nothing really doing. But Tycho does go down in the meantime to Deadly Seed. So he's handling business all on his own, but Rive with the with the fat little health bonus. Now to 16 HP on the demo. Just desperately trying to set up a sticky trap and hoping that he walks into it, but yeah, there he goes. There's so many places for him to come up and sneak up on you on. It's really it's it's basically a gamble putting out these sticky traps, but Rive actually going down pretty early to low health, but Tyka going to pick up Deadly Seed, Seed and Rive will finish off Gaia in the meantime, and I think they're going to have to probably rethink their strategy. They do have one free swap available for per player, so, you know, if all else fails, they can go nuclear and just go double scout and hope for the best, but I mean, the, the longer they wait, the worse it's going to be for them, because now Tyko is already pulling away with, it with the help of Rive by 7 points, 11 to 4. And this could be over before we know it, and we could be going on to process just like that. Dennis now getting the con to arrive, and Tycho on to Gaia. Just a scoppy scop, but Tycho with the health advantage by about 55 points. Getting chipped down, Dennis, or Deadly Seed, not going to be able to pull that one out. Now 12 to 4, 8 points separating these two, and 8 points for Tycho and Rive to take this first map. If all else goes according to plan, and just like that, Ooh. man, just nothing but health advantage, man. It does. It seems like I, I don't know who the hell picked this map, but I'm guessing it was Psycho and Rive, and they must have had some inside yeah, baseball so. to figure that one out because this seems completely coordinated on their part. They knew exactly how to come out and play that after a little bit of uh, the feeling and probing around to see how this is going to go. But yeah, this is not a map for demo, I would say. No, it, it definitely isn't, at least in this uh, uh, kind of 1v1 scenario, because there's just so much ground and so many angles that you have to kind of keep track on that, right. you know, these scouts can just duke and dodge and kind of sneak up behind you so easily that they're kind of forced into this corner and they're kind of looking at lower, they're looking to the left, they're looking to the right, they're looking on top, like, where could they be coming in? And it just seems like every single time a Tycoon Rive have been able to get in, there but, we go. you know, if he starts hitting some shots like that, it's not all out and over as a uh, 
is Deadly Seed going to be able to win his one against Drive now at Tycho versus Gaia? Some nice pipes from Gaia going to be able to clutch that one out. So uh, it's still a very big lead from Tycho and Rive, a 10-point lead, um, but not completely undoable for Gaia and Deadly Seed. They are in a little bit of a pickle here, though, as a uh, Tycho and Rive just kind of <laughs> run in and shoot them down. Now, only three points between uh, victory for Tycho and Rive. We do <laughs> have Rive just kind of running in there all willy-nilly. Gaia oh. going to be able to pipe down both of them. That was just a... Uh, that, that, that was just kind of running into all of the fire and seeing what you can kind of get. Didn't get much, but, I mean, they've got a few no. points to work with. Yeah, oh. yeah, they have, they have time to fool around, man. That was... <laughs> Don't, I don't think he was expecting to get much except maybe some BM points there. Holy cow. Yeah, that was a... Uh, th the thing is, though, it's like once you learn a couple... You lose a couple points, you're like, all right, that's fine. I I got a couple more points, yeah. you know, that I can clutch. This. Oh, you're going for the melee kill. They're going for the... Oh, Bruh, my goodness. That is goodness. just... Have some class. Come on oh, now. Oh, my goodness. Say that for the grand finals, at least. Don't do it to them like this. Oh, my God. This is a... Uh, this is probably the most a... Uh, well, the dominant match we've seen so far uh, past kind of the round two. Uh, Tycho and Rive doing really well on their map selection here uh, to pick this one. And that uh, they've been able to uh, uh, just kind of use the scout class to its fullest. Just kind of sneak in around and kind of a uh, unfortunately kind of catch out the demo whenever possible. Only going to be one more point before they are going to be able to take this first map. They're going to be able to take down Deadly Seed. And it's going to be Gaia soon to follow. Oh, oh. And that's going to be the first map going in the favor of... Tycho and Rive next up is going to be Process, which, you know, still a good scout map, but, you know, at least for demo on this, I think shooting off of height is going to be a lot easier. And, uh, you know, also, it's probably a bit more common, so Gaia might have a just a bit more innate experience, you know. Um, I think it's going to be more kind of the of, same, honestly, because it's just yeah. the blind corners, you know what I mean? I'm just, it's yeah, true. these map picks are really curious for a guy that's playing demo. I don't, I don't know what the hell their thought process was, frankly. Yeah, I, I think you're right. I do assume that this was a uh, Tycho and Rives map pick, yeah. at least uh, Reckoner, because I think they got home. Uh, they were the home team, so I assume they would have uh, picked their mm. map first. But regardless, we are going to be going on the process. Well, he's Wait, on process, process second. Oh. oh, my God. Oh. If they're going to process second. That That is amazing. Process oh. second. Underrated. Okay. underrated MGE map. Oh, no, you're um, right, but I guess that's not what they're doing. Damn. Oh, no, wait, they Process. I was thinking Granary. I'm a retard. Holy cow. No, yeah, Process is fine. Oh. For them. I, I don't know why I thought Granary. I I, <laughs> I, I read Process and I'm like, Granary? Oh, yeah, of course. That's an MGE map. No, yeah, it is It is an MGE map. I, yeah, I've, I've done some uh, Soldier V demo. Process mid or process second? Please do process second. Please process so, second. Someone tell them to do process oh, second. Oh, they're that doing is... middle. Cowards. They're Cowards. Oh, and um, by the way, an update on the Detroit Lions and San Francisco 49ers game. It's tied 24 with about 12 minutes to go in the fourth quarter. So there's that update for you. Ooh. Got some semifinals of our own out here. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, my. Oh, my. Damn. Tie game all right so we got a, a lot of action going on moment. in the it's world of sports yeah, yeah. <laughs> you know in, in the world of sports tf2 and yeah, the nfl two classic uh pairings right there they're pretty you similar know? Yeah, yeah they're pretty similar you know i mean well whenever whenever anyone says something about the nfl something about tf2 is sure to follow <laughs> you know what i mean it's just okay. like okay you got me there they're <laughs> <laughs> just so connected um whoa I, I, nice whoa. trade holy trader main uh, our producer <laughs> <Yeah, trader. laughs> <laughs> oh shit okay. really? well we have a uh we have got our payment but these guys are still fighting for theirs at the moment as a uh i think i'm gonna like... decline this one actually i'm gonna decline this trade. this isn't good for me <laughs> As we go in onto map two of still the semifinals of the Jeebus MGE 2v2 tournament. Uh, playing for a first place prize of 50 keys. This is going to be Dark Pig and Rive, a.k.a. Tycho and Rive, versus Deadly Seed and Gaia, who is currently aliased as Dennis and G. 
and just so you can uh, keep along with us as a, uh, it is going to be Deadly Seed and Gaia taking the extremely early lead, only going to be one. Oh, but I, it is going to be interesting. We do have Tycho up on the soldier, rocking it with the shotgun. So maybe kind of recognizing, you know, the change of oh, process. Rive. Yeah. Is Rive? Oh, yeah, it is Rive on Soldier. My bad. I, I thought it was Tycho, but no, Tycho's still up on Scout. Rive up on Soldier, which is a departure from what we saw last time, number one, which was two Scouts oh. and a nice pipe from Gaia. Well, he's dearly departed now after that, pill. Good Lord. <laughs> He is indeed, as he is uh, going to have to quickly get back into the swing of things as they, uh, they're going to have to try and fight. We do see a bomb come in. He hits a rocket in a shotgun shot, but not going to be enough okay. to take anyone down. And Gaia, with the stickies, going to be able to clean it up. A tie game 2-2 two to two as we get in to this second match. And a, uh, it, it's going to be interesting to see how Rive uh, especially wants to try and play this because, you know, he's got the shotgun. He can do a couple rocket jumps, but he can't do too many. A nice direct onto Gaia. It wasn't an air shot, but it was just a very crisp rocket to yeah. be able to take the demo down. But Deadly Seed, regardless, is going to be able to uh, clutch out the point for his team. Going to make it a 3-2 game. And, oh, my Rive. Yeah, fat mid-air direct, dude. He's actually coming in clutch. I think, I, I mean, I would have thought, yeah, Taika would have been better on Soldier, but Ryan's got some rockets of his own, and he's not afraid to show it, man. But this is actually, yeah, now that I am not retarded and realize that Granary is indeed not process. yeah, no, this makes a lot more sense for, for Demo on this map, because, I mean, yeah, there's some blind corners, but there's a lot more width to it, you know what I'm saying? Whereas it's a lot yeah. more claustrophobic on record. But yeah, no, this plays way more to the demo strengths in this one, but it seems like Rive has the counter ready with the Soldier, and he's coming out and showing it big, but, man, uh, Deadly Seed taking out, oh, 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 taking out Tycho with the scatter gun, but Rive has a, there, there you go, there's the market gardener that we were waiting for. Oh, we were wondering if we were going to see, we haven't seen that much soldier out outside of Saxophone and Gungan, but uh, with Rive coming up on it, we might see some more gardens headed our way as uh, still, however, it is going to be Deadly Seed and Gaia uh, in the lead so far. You, you know, you said exactly what I was thinking. This demo man proven a lot better of a choice for uh, Deadly Seed and Gaia at the moment. It's just a lot easier to just kind of lock down these areas and kind of force Tycho and Rive into the positions that you kind of want them to play in that is a little bit easier for you to spam and uh, just going to be uh, playing this actually very Ooh. slow, kind of a slower MGE round, but with a uh, Deadly Seed again, going to be able to take down a bombing Tycho, uh, sorry, a bombing Rive, it's going to be Tycho and Deadly Seed in a Scout 1v1, just going to try and see where <laughs> each other are and kind of get the best positioning Ooh. possible. Tycho had the high ground and he was able to win it and that is going to make it still... Uh, Deadly Seed and Gaia up in the lead, but uh, they're going to try and claw it back. Tycho and Rive going to be bombing in with the shotgun out, but they are going to be able to be taken down here as they uh, just extremely back and forth here. But you got to imagine that without Rive going in super deep and super huge with some insane rocket shotgun sink shenanigans, it's going to be a lot harder for them to kind of have the same dominance that they had on Reckoner. As he's going to be bombing in onto the... He's going to actually be take down Gaia there. Really great rockets uh, with this, the distraction from Tycho to help him get in cleanly there. And Tycho going to be doing that long-range chip damage. Now, as we do have a um, Deadly Seed playing around with his demo, just trying to lock things down. Going to be taking it down. Gaia going to be early here. And now it's only going to be a 1v1 between Rive and Deadly Seed. Rive going to win it. And that shotgun... So crucial, so clutch, because when you can't hit those rocket shots, you know, the scout's just dodging around a bit too nimbly for you. You can just whip out that shotgun, yeah. hit him in the face with some bullets, and send them back to the respawn room. Speaking about respawn room, that's going to be Gaia going back with, once again, Rive with that shotgun, making the most of a 2008 soldier. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, well, especially when you have Mouse 2 bound to switch between rockets and shotgun like I do. Yeah, you can just do a little pop-up, give him how do you do, quick rocket to the feet, and then a boop. Quick, you know, 100 damage meat shot from the shotgun. He's doing that. It's a great effect here. Yeah. Uh, uh, Tycho and Rive up by 1.9 to 8. Deadly Seed and Gaia doing their best. They actually have the man advantage here now. Rive with only 95 HP left. Oh, it's a fat low ground direct onto uh, Deadly Seed, but that won't deter him. He's going to get the kill in the end. Going to tie this up 9 to 9. Uh, just chilling each other out. Seeing who's going to make the first move. We'll be Rive with the jump up. Getting scattered. By Deadly Seed with some stickies coming up close behind from Gaia. Actually, a lot better health 
on the blue side. And now Taika with just 21 HP will have to face off against Dennis. Will he come out on top? No, he won't. Will indeed go down, meaning the lead will go back to Deadly Seed and Gaia. 10 to 9. And they've got to win this one in order to stay in contention. Bring it to a third map and some fat stickies coming up from Gaia. Gonna chip down Rive and Dennis will finish him off with the scatter shot. Bringing that to 11 to 9. Just nine more <laughs> points until they take this map and bringing it to a third one. Yes, uh, third one if they do win it because it was Taiku and Arrive. You were able to win the first one over on Reckoner. A nice pipe from Gaia uh, to take Taiko down there. And uh, it's going to be interesting to see what they do on Badlands because, you know, that could be an opportunity for Taiko and Rive to just go back to the double scout. We have seen it prove very effective um, against, you know, a scout and soldier and a scout in demo. So definitely an opportunity for them. But they could also go with the soldier as well and they uh, just have that projectile firepower uh, at their disposal if they want to just try and insta bomb the demo you know kind of every time and then let the scouts duke it out but uh first they gotta win this map over on process and uh to do so at, at least that is a deadly seed in gaia as a uh, that's gonna be a one for one trade now taiko has just gotta try and chip down gaia guy gonna have to try and hit a pipe Tycho going to be winning that engagement right now. Some good spam coming off right now onto a bombing ride, but he hits a nice upward direct onto Deadly Seed to take him out. Tycho comes in with the cleanup, and they are going to be trying to equalize things. Still Deadly Seed and Gaia in the lead, 13 to 11. Oh, but some down, nice down. pipes. Oh, but Rive! He oh, just with a shot. Of his own. Oh, my God. <laughs> Shoddy boom body from him, man. He's just hitting some crisp shots with the rocket launcher and with the shotgun shown. He can do hit scan and projectile. Oh my god, he was able to just oh kind of walk Lord. past Deadly Seed. But Gaia with the nice pipes and a, uh, you know, that's kind of the thing. MG, he has like such a flow to it. Like, mm. if you get one point, you're likely to get like a couple others. But once they get another point, they're likely to get a couple others. It just kind of goes and swings, you know. The momentum comes with you and then it goes away from you. It's, question it's, is, yeah. Hmm, it's, it's, it's a lot more reminiscent of actual, you know, Quake 1v1 DM, which this is obviously based on as a game mode, right? And, yeah. and so, yeah, that dynamic is there. I mean, obviously, you're not going around the map collecting health and armor power ups, but, but the momentum thing is for sure still a factor, especially in Quake 1, dude. That, that game is so ridiculously based around oh, momentum. Yeah. You, you have like blowouts of like 20 to 1 easily in, in Quake 1. It, it relaxed, you know, right around Quake 3 and then Quake 4 and all that, but yeah. It's it's still a factor in in TF2 MGE that 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 sort of legacy has lived on past its Quake World days and in the meantime we have <laughs> we have this match still going on 16 to 13 Deadly Seed and Gaia in the lead 16 to 13 uh, now it's just Deadly Seed left alive with seven HP that means it's going to be 14 to 16 Claw net back that's Tycho and Rive they're trying to close this one out as quickly as they can but Deadly Seed and Gaia do have something to say about that but. Here we go, Gaia cornered in the death corner by Rive with the shotgun gonna finish him off, bringing that to 16 to 15. Still in the lead, no pressure, you know, no big deal. They just gotta close this one out, bring it to a third map, but not if Tycho has anything to say about that, it gets shut down, but Gaia has some pills of his own and he has something to say about that and it's gonna be, I have 17 points, you have 15. Uh, yeah. uh, uh, Rive jumping up, oh, Ooh, getting a pop shot on the Gaia. Now it's just uh, De Deadly Seed left to fend for himself. And then this is getting really down to the wire here, down to the nitty gritty. Scott's trading shots, and now Rive finally jumping in on top of the demo. Getting the bomb in behind the rock. Scott's on the case, trying to hit the low ground direct onto Deadly Seed. Nothing doing, but now it is a 2v1, but Rive with very low HP. Kind of ineffective. Dennis likes to just get the, the, the slightest of chip shots on Rive, and he does. Bringing that to a 1v1, but Rive. Ooh, Tyco. Or, Ty, Tyco with the height advantage will take him down. Tying it up once again, 17 all. Three points separating these two teams. One will go to the finals, one will bring it to a third map. We'll see how this goes. And we are going to see how it goes. They're going to be facing off against Saxophone and a Gungan in the finals. Whoever does make it there. And that's going to be Rive going down early. So now it's only going to be Tycho on the other side of a map trying to a stay health, alive. Though. And yeah, he does have a lot of health. And, you know, they're kind of, they're very weak on the side. Gaia only has three health left. He had to hit two nice pipes in succession there to be able to walk away from it. And Tycho and Rive going to be able to get the lead late into this game. Only two more before they walk away with it. Some nice pipes and some scattergun shots 
from uh, Guy and Deadly Seeds and be able to take down Tycho. They arrive not long for this world, tying it up 18 to 18. This is their opportunity to stay in a Deadly Scene and Guy, they have to win this if they want to try and get on to the finals, but for Tycho and Rive, they want to try and win this so they can get there almost immediately and not have to play a third map. Rive can be able to take down Deadly Seed with some long range spam damage and now only one more point for them to get in to Ooh. the grand finals here. Oh, a nice pipe or sticky from Guy is going to be able to shut down Tycho. Now, this is definitely doable for them. Going to be one bombing soldier. Oh my yeah. god, he does get the rocket and he gets Run. the shotgun as well. So right. clutch. That is extremely clutch. And that is going to be Tycho and Rive, your finalist, facing off against Saxophone and Gungan. Shoutouts to Deadly Seed and Gaia for getting this far in the tournament. Yeah. We didn't get to see them. Uh, all too often, but they are definitely showing their worth to, uh, you know, very close MGE battles there. But at the end of the day, Tycho and Rive going to be our finalists here. Well, they would get their place, right? So that's 10 keys. I mean, that's not bad for a couple hours of playing MGE. Yeah, exactly. You right? know, 10, or, that's, or that's there... more than I've made from MGE. <laughs> yeah, right. yeah, right. How many times can you yeah. say, yeah, I made money playing MGE. Hmm. No, oh, I, I exactly. Actually, you know, you were talking about a um, the uh big uh ice pools. I think there was a uh, a legendary MGE battle. It wasn't an MGE tourney, but it was an MGE battle for some serious moolah. It was a uh, mm. I think it was an MGE battle for a thousand dollars. And that's not all. They are also <laughs> this. This could be complete copy pasta, but I think there is a video out there to prove it um it was a, a mge battle for a thousand dollars and i uh a, a girl i think there was some beef I, I was going gonna on say a girlfriend yeah. like what else yeah. could it be <laughs> no yeah there, there was some Jeez. beef going on between two guys i the thing is i don't even think they like they told her anything that this was going on it was just two guys <laughs> beefing you know a thousand dollars on the line you know who who gets to ask out this girl and get rejected first, you know, type of deal or whatever. <laughs> it's like a TF2 arranged marriage. What the hell? <laughs> but a, um, I think there is a video out there. I, it's a very wacky uh, series of events because I think they do heavy, heavy MGE on Bad Spire. We were talking about you don't, you don't do scout on Bad Spire. They were doing heavy on Bad Spire, if my memory serves correct. And it was a uh, uh, all on the line there, a thousand dollars in a uh, a lot more, but I, I forget how it happened. I'm sure there's someone out there who can uh, uh, drag that video out of the depths of the, uh, the YouTube hellscape and they uh, bring that back to the forefront of a conversation. But regardless, Tycho and Rive versus Gungan and uh, Saxophone. I mean, Not on so paper. Oh. We have a third and fourth place match coming up. It's oh. best of one. Oh, so yum yum and scratch versus guy in deadly seed. This is for ten of the marbles um, for third and fourth <laughs> place. Oh, ten and five of the marbles, and it's going to be blands naturally. Blands, all right, good old classic blands. I mean, we we've been spoiled number one in these past few. You know, we had product, we had recognor, we had process. We've been spoiled. It's okay to go back to some blands. You know, it's just, tried and tested. Just play b-ball, man. That's what I'm trying to see. <laughs> Don't be Someone, a coward. Please. Come on. Oh, what are you afraid to do? Oh, you're going to mess up a mess up an air shot on stream? Play b-ball. I don't care. <laughs> no excuses. Someone, please, please get this Got man some b-ball. Give the people, give the people what they want. Right? They want, yeah. <laughs> no, they, 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 they want b-ball. That's, that's really? what I think. I, I assume <laughs> so. Maybe. <laughs> but they don't screw them. They don't count. Exactly. You're wrong. We're right. That's the end of the story. No, Basically. No, 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 that's no, no, how, no. Yeah, and that's how fat casting works. Shut up. You don't know. <laughs> I guess you do know. Never mind. They don't know. They don't know, but they, uh, I guess it is going to be interesting to see Deadly Seed and Gaia versus a um, Scratch and Yum Yum. Yum Yum, Yum Yum. Um, definitely. Uh, Every time I hear Yum Yum, I might have to say it like that. Yum Yum. It is yum, a yum, uh, yum, yum. It is a very catchy name. Yeah. Yeah, very catchy, <laughs> very catchy name. You know, Yum Yum. 
It's got it. Well, it makes me think of what is it? Uh, yum yum donuts. I don't know if that's a yum, something yum. where you guys, where y'all are, but at least out here we got yum yum donuts and uh, and well, they're pretty yummy. Yeah. Wait, you're out in LA, right? Yeah, I am. Yeah. I, wait, did I see a yum yum donuts when I was out in LA? Oh, Jesus! Oh, my phone just fell. That's what fell. Okay. Scared the crap out of me. I thought my water bottle. <laughs> oh my god! <goodness>. <laughs> just disappear. <laughs> Uh, yeah. <laughs> I guess those five keys are going towards something, man. Screw it. Yeah, you just short your circuit, you know, your computer <laughs> just <sighs> kaputs itself. No, yeah, it's a, uh, they're, they're pretty good. You know, I think that I've seen more yum yum donuts than Dunkin' Donuts out here at the very least. That's... Dunkin' Donuts is mid. I'm not going to hold you, dude. Nah. Nah. I'd rather yum yum. Restart? Yum. All right. We're getting a restart. This is for third and fourth place. So 10 and five keys up for grabs here. Going to be Deadly Seed versus Gaia and Yum Yum and Scratch. Two two very good teams, but unfortunately relegated to the third and fourth place match. Let's see how this goes. Early frags traded and it will be Gaia and Dennis or Deadly Seed getting first blood. One to zero. Badlands middle. Saxophone. Eh, that's not who I want. Oh great, there's multiple matches going on. I can't just look at the, the kill feed to, to guide my hips. <laughs> in, the, in the meantime, Deadly Sea gonna get both kills onto Scratch and Yum Yum. Bringing that to two to zero. Scratch helping out. Ooh, fat sticky from Gaia taking out Scratch in the meantime. So it will be him versus Yum Yum. On, both on Soldier, actually. They, they're not on Scott anymore. I wonder what the what the switch up was. And actually, Sax is on, huh? Wait, what? Am I seeing that right? I think no, what? No, I'm looking at the wrong players. Teehee. I'm all confused. <laughs> no, yeah, I, I was I was going to say, because I just saw that they were uh, in a little bit of a solo 1v1 yeah. out there. Okay, That's so Yum Yum and Scratch. So it's Yum Yum on Soldier, Scratch on Scout, and then Deadly Seed on Scout. And okay, so they Ooh, the nice same. direct from Yum Yum, though. Yum, that was yum, a yum. really crisp a uh, direct onto the scout there to take him down oh. as Yum Yum. Oh, almost got another one onto Gaia. Uh, <laughs> not going to quite hit it, but the potential. We all saw what could have happened. The potential was there. Uh, now it's just going to be Yum Yum waddling around. Even though he's definitely much more known for his scout. I remember Yum Yum on one of the, uh, the teams he was on before Freyotech. He swapped over onto Soldier and he did wonders on it. I think it was a, a product game. And uh, he's just hitting a nice direct onto Deadly Seed. And uh, Scratch coming in to help clean things up here. Going to be a lone guy. Going to be shot down as Yum Yum and Scratch doing a, uh, doing a lot of work right now. Um, just especially with these crisp, crisp rockets coming out from Yum Yum. Can't oh, guy defend that. himself. Oh, just walked into that one. Yeah, definitely. Oh, oh my God. Woo! Yeah, Yum Yum is just hopping all over the place, and he is hitting the crispy rockets to make it worthwhile. Um, at the moment, just going to be trying to play to preserve his health. He's on the only one up, and oh, he's going to get shot out of the sky. Not much you can do as a soldier there. Yeah. You're just meat for the scout to farm, and now it's going to be uh, them having a better go of things. Going to be able to shoot down Gaia. They got a good, healthy lead of five points, nine to four. So still fairly early in this match. A nice rocket, I think, from uh -oh. Yum Yum. He's going oh, jumping oh, high. Oh, oh, with Gaia! Mid-air oh direct. Oh my Yum Yum! yum, yum. <laughs> Oh my was god! This? Where was this five minutes ago? What the hell? Holy cow! We just, he just he sh Yum Yum should have been on soldiers this whole time, and <laughs> this is the shots he's hitting. He oh doesn't care goodness. about fifty keys. He wants those ten keys, boy. He wants yeah, those I ten <laughs> keys. Fifty's nothing to him. Fifty keys. He sleeps ten keys. Real <laughs> shit. As he is coming in. Oh, we got a melee battle. He wins it too. Oh, let's my go. Lord. Yum yum, but we, we're getting everything in this match. We're getting the air shots, we're getting the melee battles, dude. This is just beautiful. This is the beautiful game. Oh, People, oh my god, that was. I mean, he hit that rocket. He didn't win it, but he hit that rocket. And that was he a hit very that nice, rocket. Yeah, it was a very crisp, crisp rocket coming out there. Deadly Seed and Gaia trying to hang in here. They're down by six points, but oh, that's nice sticky from Gaia over the point to be able to collect that frag as uh, they're going to be trying to get back into things here. Now we do have Yum Yum jumping with the shotgun out. Some nice tickets from Gaia to take him down as 
They're now going to see Yum Yum bombing in. He gets Fly almost him. instantly deleted. Uh, unfortunate for him. Now he's up to, up to scratch to try and clutch it out. Oh, did he get oh my god, he one scatter shot? What? Oh my lord. What? Yes, he got both in one scatter shot. Dude, that's nuts. Oh my what? god. Oh my god. That, dude, that's... Why oh is the god. third and fourth place so much hyper than all the rest of them we've seen? Dude, <laughs> there's, dude, there's no way going to be able to top this out. This is just ridiculous. Come on now. Uh, that is wild. That is... Dude. Who knew 10 keys was the actual best prize? Dude, they're going nuts! They're go they, they are pulling out all the stops here. I mean, Seriously? Jeez. I, I, maybe they know something we don't, but those 10 keys, they desperately want. Nah, this uh, is they personal, man. That has nothing to yeah. do with the keys. I'm convinced <laughs> now. This is personal. It may be. I mean, these, t these guys have played against each other a fair few times. Just in the kind of invite advanced area is now we have a 1v1. It's going to be Deadly Seed going to be able to walk away with that one. They've been able to tie things up, Deadly Seed and Gaia. Um, so good job on them. They, it was a six-point deficit previously, and they've been able to make it yeah. an even game as... Now it's just going to be um, only Yum Yum. He does head a nice rocket onto Deadly Seed. Gaia just kind of waddling away from the shotgun spam. Yum Yum actually goes in with the mm. rocket jump. That was so risky. He only had eight health at the end of it, but uh, he's going to be able to yeah, collect that kill. You only need one health in a dream, number one, mm -hmm. to be able to do some damage. That's what I always say. One, all you need is one HP <laughs> to frag, baby. And it, yeah, it's coming out big here now. 14 to 15. Guy and Deadly Seed in the lead for the moment. But Yum Yum and Scratch, man, we've seen they, they know how to pull out all the stops and just come in fat, but not when you walk into stickies of Gaia like that. And Dennis, or Deadly Seed there to finish off Yum Yum with the scatter gun of his own. He has hit scan, but it's his main ooh, method of dealing damage. Scratch getting two kills right there. Now 16 to 15, just one point separating these two. All Scratch and Yum Yum have to do is get four more as now it's tied up 16 all, so four points Oof. separates both these teams from 10 keys or five keys, and we'll see how it goes. So incredibly close right here, as we do have Scratch coming in from behind, gonna be able to take down Guy now in the 1v1 Deadly Seed, gonna be able to walk away with it, 17 to 16 here, uh, down uh, super close for both these teams. Sky High Soldier is gonna land on a scout quite literally, and kind of send him into the ground, yum yum, very weak <laughs> after that. they uh. Gaia high uh, little airline flight he took there. Um, oh, but Gaia is going to be trying to defend himself. He does no take way. down Yum Yum. Oh my god, he's just doing so much work to he's just so whittle down guns. Oh. I mean, Scratch, he's just shooting and dodging. He's trying to... Oh, oh he gets it. He gets it. So, so close. 17 to 17. Extremely, extremely even at the moment. Guy is going to be the only oh, one no. alive, so he's going to fall 18 to 17. This is an opportunity for Yum Yum and Scratch to walk away with it potentially. Dennis, uh, uh, aka Deadly Seed, going to be able to take down Scratch. Now it's only going to be Yum Yum. Oh. He's got the ability to hit some shots, but he's in a 2v1 that he's not going to be able to win. 18 to 18, oh, going Lord. down even closer. They just trading it one to one every single time. Now we have a demo disconnected. Yum Yum is going to be met with the scout trying to come in. Uh -oh. They take each other out as a little bit of a scout. 1v1, both of them really weak. Oh my god, hit them with the ball after the fact, but it's still going to be Yum Yum and Scratch winning it. 19 to 1. Can they clean this up? Now it's going to be on Deadly Seed. K is going to be able to get on to Yum Yum. This is definitely doable for him. He's just going to play the space, play the distance. Oh, Can he missing. win the hit scan? Oh my god! 19 to 19. Yum Yum goes in for the bomb to start things off. He's going to be jogged and jostled around. going to be taken down with a nice pipe from Gaia. Now can he come in and clean oh! things up? And it's gonna be Gaia and Deadly C. Three, uh, taking third place, 20 to 19. Very, very <laughs> great match between those, those four. Yeah, don't get no closer than that, man. Really unfortunate for them, but well played. Holy cow, from both teams. So yeah. Gaia and Deadly Seed gonna be walking away with third place and 10 keys to the name to split up. Unfortunately, Scratch and Yum Yum down to fourth place. But hey, they gave us a show for this one, man. That was probably the best one we've seen yet. Yeah, I think that, yeah, I mean, that single scatter double kill is something you rarely ever see. I mean, you know, it's like, it, it's kind of like the, you know, the rare thing for Scout is like you kill a Scout and like the Archimedes. Uh, like bird pops out. Like <laughs> yeah, I feel yeah, like yeah. I feel like you see that like fairly often. I feel like the really the actual rare thing is getting a double kill as a scout with one <laughs> yeah. uh, scatter shot. You know what I mean? 
Uh, that you know, is even probably. in MGE with you know the the frequency of kills, you still rarely see that. Even in two v two, you don't see that that often. But yeah, dude, even in pubs, dude, you don't even see that that often. But man, oh, yeah. coming in clutch, trying to trying to win ten keys. Oh yeah, all day, double kills with one scatter shot. Sure. <laughs> yeah, it is just a uh, such. I don't a... understand this game. I don't know. It's a, I it's, it's I do, a beautiful I game. <laughs> yeah, it's it's the beautiful game. Um as I think yeah, yeah, you know, many songs were written about it. Uh calling it the beautiful what? game. What the hell are you talking about? You know, like a uh I feel like there's there's, there's gotta be some type of T F two song out there. You know what I, I mean? know the song uh my favorite game by uh my favorite game. My favorite game by the cardigans. Oh, Famously oh. featured in Gran Turismo 2, by the way, little fun fact. Ooh. Ooh. Do you think uh, their I, favorite game was actually Gran Turismo 2? Or when they saw that, they're like, dude, this sucks. <laughs> this, this blows. <laughs> I, I think they saw the sales figures and the royalties, and they're like, okay, yeah, no, we like Gran Turismo 2. It's That's our fun. favorite game now. It's our favorite game now, yeah, yeah. <laughs> well, you know, I... Whose favorite game is it going to be when we have a saxophone and Gungan versus Rive and Tycho? Um, we're going to see who is a uh, feeling themselves a little bit more. I don't know if we have the map picks and bands for that one just quite yet. Not that I see. Not, but uh, I assume that, uh, judging by how well they did on Reckoner, I, I mean, you kind of got to assume that Riven, Riven Tiger are going to do something similar this time as well, because I assume Saxophone's going to be on Soldier again. They could have Rive go over to Soldier, but, you know, if they go over to Reckoner, I still think a double scout there is going to be a, a really, really beneficial, because it's going to force Saxophone into just spamming from long range and, you know, maybe getting some damage is going to put a lot of pressure on Gungan, I think, to really um, kind of carry things for the team in such an open, open map uh, like Reckoner or a, uh, even, I mean, hell, you know, they could they can make it super weird and take us to something like propaganda, you know, and just, <laughs> just throw everyone off, you know. Huh? Oh. Oh, the Lions are losing apparently 24 to 34. Yeah, let me look over. Minute left. The Lions, fourth and goal on the three yard line. Snap to Jared Goff, looking left. Passes it down the middle. Oh, and caught. Caught by, uh, uh God, who is that? Number eight? Oh, James. Uh, I wanted a number six, bro. Uh, well, you're going to get a number eight, and you're going to get six points. So 56 seconds left. Now just for the PAT to bring it to 31. They're going to be down by a field goal. And yeah, good connection from Goff to Williams in the end zone. I don't know why the hell I'm casting this. But the... <laughs> <laughs> I was like, holy cow. We've just, yeah, I mean, it's what they say. TF2 and the NFL. It's just inseparable, bro. <laughs> inseparable. I mean, they got two timeouts, 56 seconds. Two timeouts for both teams, actually. So yeah, I don't know, man. How, how much did they practice onside kicks? I don't know. I, I mean, I I feel like it's... Well, kickers honestly don't... Like, I, I played kicker for my freshman football team in high school, and, like, yeah, I barely got any practice time, dude. And it's the same for the NFL. They really don't practice all that much. Yeah, because, it's just because, kind of like... Yeah, well, you don't uh, want to wear out your leg, because it's very easy to, like, to throw something if you're just, just sending them 50 yards, you know, 60 yards every single day, dude. It's a lot of strain on your leg. Oh, yeah, there's a lot of strain. But, I mean, I mean, those are the kind of the moments where it's really just clutch or kick, literal. Yeah. Literally, yeah. <laughs> or kick or kick. kick. Kick, yeah, kick and kick. Kick or kick. <laughs> kick, or kick. <laughs> Unfortunate. Uh, you know, maybe for this potential kicker, um, if things uh, end up going that way. But uh, I guess just waiting for Gungan and Saxon and Tycoon Rev to figure out what type of maps they want to uh, combat each other on. I've got to say, you know, hopefully, you know, maybe we see some, a, uh, I mean, I'm not really jonesing for some propaganda, but some um, yeah, you are. process second. Oh, my days. Give me some process second. Process please. second, gully watch second, b-ball, pick something. Something that isn't Wait, wait, <laughs> wait, two of them actually joined gully watch second. That's wait a thought. second. <laughs> oh, my goodness. Let's go. Let's go. Let's go. Uh, what are the maps? Let me see here. Oh, I mean, I... I think I think they're just a uh, 
MGE and Gungan and Sax just to stay warm. I don't know if this is an actual map. Yeah, no. 